Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, City of Satellite Beach. This is a regular meeting. The date is August 1st, 2012. The time is 6 p.m. and I'd like to turn it over to Councilman Billman. Could you please stand for a moment of silence? And bless our troops all over the world. Now for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I'd just like to make note that Councilman French was uh, going to be here on Skype. However, his meeting has run uh, longer than expected, so he will not be joining us t uh, tonight. Uh, all right. Introduction to guests. Are there any anybody here for the first time? Sir, uh, where do you live in Satellite Beach? Uh, yep. Could you just stand up and introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Colin. I'm Virginia. I live at Street. Well, welcome and welcome to the city meeting. Thank you. I have uh, four people who would like to talk on citizens' comments. Uh, Dana Billman. Yes. Okay, we didn't see this on there, so we decided to be just use this time to do a little brief update on the Beachcaster. Okay. Is that okay? Good. Um, Dana Billman, a resident. Um, we met today, and we kind of compiled all the information and some ideas, uh, and we came up with we have some options. And so we wanted to throw those out there and see what you guys thought and what worked best before we go forward with what we want to do. It will run us about $2,200 to do 5,000, about 5,000 copies, and do eight pages. It will run us about six $1,500 to do four pages. If we're just going to have a basic beach caster uh, that we have, um, as in the past, we have like the council members, the city manager, um, the department heads give us information, we can probably get away with four pages. If we're going to make it where we bring in the new candidates that are going to be running for the seats, then we're not going to be able to get all that in, depending on how many people decide to run. That is also going to play into it. Our thought was we preferred going with the eight pages. We plan on going out and trying to get... Um, at a minimum, well, 10 advertisers. We're going to start the first speech caster with 10 advertisers. We can get um, five, was it five on each page or 10 on each page? Five. 10. 10 on each page. So I guess it's actually 20 advertisers. Uh, we're charging $30 per business card size uh, um, advertisement on that. And we'll have two pages that will be strictly advertising. With that, we're going to give them the option. Everything has to be camera ready, ready for printing when they bring it to us. They will have the option of doing a business card, doing a little coupon, doing whatever they want, you know, within that space. Um, we think that's very doable. We think we can get enough people that will support it. If we do that, basically we cover more than half of the cost, the additional cost to have the eight pages. Um, we are also going to go with some of the local groups, ask them if we can be added into their budgets when they start setting up for the new year, uh, say like the women's group, the Lions Club, some of the church groups, those type of things, um, to do contributions to help support um, the beach caster. Um, we also are going to steal an idea from SPRA. They had a an insert where they go out and ask their community to contribute, and it's a very minimal amount, and you contribute it directly in, and it basically goes toward the payment of their newsletter. We're going to try to set up some kind of um, organization or, or something that we can do, and we'd have to work with Lenore or Brenda on how we would do that, but have people in the community that are wanting to help support some of this that they can contribute in. We're also going to go to some of the different individuals or groups that have email lists, ask them if we can develop an email that we can send out through them. Like we would send it to them, they'll send it out to their groups, asking uh, and giving them a way to actually buy into receiving the Beachcaster via email as opposed to printed. Um, because we already have some of the city doesn't have a list per se, but different groups have that, and those are people that have already bought into getting information via the email, so they may be more receptive or may prefer to do that. So that's an option. 
We want to try to set up an actual email account through the city that is just for the beach caster. So when that information goes out and people say, you know what, I want my stuff via email, they're not sending it back to an individual. They're actually sending it back to an entity that's tied in with this. So we could have those responses come back that way and we could start setting that up. Um, we also are going to, once we make the decision on how the, the beach caster is, we're developing an email that we're going to send out to the businesses to let them know that this is what we have generated sort of what our plans and hopes are for the future um, and sort of sell the idea and ask for their contributions or ask for them to advertise. We also are going to select um, certain businesses and go face to face to them and do a direct appeal to them to try to bring it in. Um, now the big question is the, based on the lag time, it probably takes about two weeks by the time we get the information to the printer, they do the layout, they do the printing, all the stuff gets collated, it gets to the mail drop, and then it actually gets mailed out. So if we're looking at we want something by the 1st of September, there is no way we can put any new candidate information in there. And a number of people, I know when we were out walking, they said that was one of the ways that they garnered their information on who they were going to vote for, and they felt that was very important. So if we want to put that in there, because they don't even have to qualify until the 23rd of August. So we are already looking with our two-week lag time, even if they all qualified on the 23rd, you have to get at least a day to write something, um, then that it, there just really isn't enough time to get that, the uh, Beachcaster out for like the first part of September. We're already looking at the middle of September. So we were thinking a better target date would be about September 15th. That way we would be able to incorporate with them, give them a fair amount of time so that they realistically could put something together. We are looking at probably the council members, the new candidates. Um, we're going to probably tell them about 100 words. We wanted to uh, limit the council members to about 150, and we also wanted to limit um, the department heads to about 125. And that's kind of basically the, the new candidates, it's going to depend on how many. If we have a plethora of people that apply for the different positions, then obviously it's going to have to shrink down. If we only have three or four, then they can have more space. Um, we've also decided we want pictures of all the uh, council members in because there's a lot of people who maybe hear names or whatever, but they don't identify. Uh, and the picture would help with that. So we, we thought that that would be a very important thing. The ultimate goal is we would like to develop a whole Beachcaster side to our, web, our website, and we would like to use the Beachcaster printed version as um, that you get a nugget of everything. It's not going to be the end-all, be-all. It's the basic pertinent information. If you need more in-depth, you need something deeper, then we're going to, to help people learn how to go to these other avenues and find it, whether that's uh, going to the website, going to the Rex website, um, going to, you know, the handouts that people have, whatever. We're trying to give them the tools that they can get the information they need, but the Beachcaster is not going to be it. And ultimately, we want to develop it into where it becomes a win-win for the businesses. If we can develop our website presence enough, then it's, it's more productive for the businesses because they have a printed version and they have a web version. So I guess the decision I need from you guys is how much we have to spend and when we want a print up. Our, our first version. Thank you. Uh, could you, uh, you mentioned we. Who's the we? Uh, it was Carol and Michelle and myself. Okay. I just, <laughs> and the mouse in my pocket. Who's on, your, who's on your committee and who's mm -hmm. helping you on this? Okay, thank you. Um, can, can I ask a question before you go? Sure. The, the $2,200, did, did that include um, the advertisers? Is that what's left after those 20 advertisers? No. Right. The 2200 is our total expense. Oh, okay. So, and that's with our mailing, our collating, our printing, all of that. So if you get these 20 advertisers, at what rate were you talking about? We were, we were thinking $30. A, an ad. Okay, so it's six hundred bucks. Right. Um, so that'll take care of. So that'll bring it down to sixteen hundred bucks. Uh, basically, it almost basically pays for the extra pages. And if we're going to put the new candidates in, we have to have the extra pages. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, we'll discuss that. We we need to uh, either put that on at the next meeting, or we'll discuss it at the end of this meeting. But uh, as far as the money, so I think we we have some time. Okay. Uh, let me bring up John Fergus. John. John Curtis, 135 Maple. 
My current council's 18 July meeting, you voted to vacate a portion of the Beach Street right-of-way between Magellan and Sunrise. You expressed an interest in vacating the rest of that right-of-way. I'm taking this opportunity to advise you that there is a growing list of volunteers ready to solicit signatures on a petition intended to force a referendum on any such giveaway if you persist on this course. My arithmetic is correct. We will need the signatures of 1,128 registered voters to do it. At the same time, the volunteers would also circulate a second petition, forcing a referendum on a charter amendment that would prohibit any future relinquishing of interest in any city-owned real estate unless approved by a binding referendum. The details of this endeavor are being worked out as we watch to see how council proceeds. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Ron, you're next, but uh, I, I'd like to go to Ms. Diane Douglas, who, is gonna, who wants to talk on the same subject. Sure. And, and then, Ron, can we go? I'll go to you after that. Hi. Beverly Beach resident. Um, I was just amazed last week, or two weeks ago, last meeting, um, that you voted to vacate a premise where you didn't have any specified boundaries. So that was very surprising to me that you wouldn't consider waiting until you knew exactly what you were voting on and where you were voting on. So that amazed me. And then another thing was um, the Women's League and many, many um, Satellite Beach residents have worked years and time and money to get beachfront property and beach property that you would just give it away. The other thing is um, your city is lacking money. I don't understand if you are want to give it away, why don't you sell it um, for funds? Do I have anything else? Well, that's, that's good for right now. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Ron Jagunas. Uh, is our last uh, citizen comment. Thank you. Roger Giddes, resident Satellite Beach. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Ron. I saw a little more smile today to a new person coming into council and uh, uh, presenting themselves. I will refer back to the meeting that Mr. Fergus and the other member were talking about. Um, that meeting, an individual comes in and with a smile on their face, yes, they did want something, but we should welcome this individual and smile to them that they invested $1.3 million into this community where a house was vacant for close to three years that was starting to deteriorate. I understand there's a right-of-way issue there. It's a little nebulous to me, and I won't get into the details right now, because I have seen surveys that have created problems on the beach, and I question the validity of it at this point. I understand their point of view. But they should understand that there is $26,000 of revenues coming in from this house, this property. 8,000 of it goes to the city of Satellite Beach. And that 8,000 supplements many homeowners who are on fixed incomes here. Grandmas and grandpas who are fighting to survive for medications alone. And that is very important to remember. And another issue is that we have budget constraints that will add to the taxable value, and we have unperfected lots here. That would increase the value of that property, which would contribute more to the community. And that's all I'm going to say about that issue. I do have one other point to discuss here. Not long ago, somebody said that when we pass the bill, then you'll know what's in it. Well, I'm going to turn it the other way, and I'm not 
throwing negativity at how the millage rate was set, which is due to be put in the maximum millage rate for on August 4th, I believe. Being on KPED, and due to the circumstances of the past, I would have hoped that we would have had more detail to ensure that we are not undervaluing the millage rate or overstating the millage rate or not setting it properly. And I consider this the oops factor, to put it mildly. And I think next year, one of next year's goals for City Council should be to have everything up front prior to setting that millage rate. And that was the idea with KPEG, to have it all in front of you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank each of the uh, people who commented uh, for their comments. Thank you. Uh, City Council comments. Councilwoman Deenan. Uh, just one, one update. I did attend Mr. Pry's uh, retirement party Friday evening. And uh, we presented him with the resolution. Um, it, was a, it was a fun event. It was. And also to let uh, just an update, we so far collected about $1,400 towards his sign. And uh, former Mayor Schechner just handed an envelope with some more donations. So I appreciate that. And we're getting towards the goal of uh, purchasing the sign for uh, now Michael P. Crowley Park. Excellent. Uh, Council Member Billman. Um, yep. With, to uh, Mr. Crotty's uh, retirement, it was a good event. Had to leave early, but uh, it started out very good. Um, that's about all I have. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to good evening. I'd like to comment uh, on the uh, the uh, the individuals about the Beach Street access. Uh, to clarify, it is not a beachfront property. It is absolutely not a beachfront property. It it intersects this person's residents and their property on each side. This, the city street runs directly through their property. It is not beachfront property. This person owns the beachfront property. It is not the city owned. just want to clarify that. Um, uh, Mr. Jagudis, um, I agree that I think uh, we, it's, it's always, this is the third time that Mayor and I have been through the budget cycle. Um, and it, it is kind of strange the way we kind of set it and then we go backwards and we kind of look at things and try and set some numbers back. And I think that we really need to take a hard look at the KPEG. We've never formally uh, gone through it and dissected it. It was submitted to us as a council to read over 88 pages or however many pages it is. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in there. I think we need to maybe set a, a, a time aside to look at this and have the KPEG people come in and help us with some numbers and, and, and dissect what your findings were and some possible recommendations. I think that's because you guys spent hours and hours uh, compiling all this information doing this research. Um, and the last thing is um, uh, a citizen last meeting and at least one other citizen a few, a few meetings prior to that uh, alluded to the fact that they thought that council members had some sort of special privilege, uh, some special power, some special privilege because we're sitting on the city council uh, with the police department, with code enforcement, something like that. I, I strongly disagree with that. And I, and I, and I feel uh, bad that, that there might be a perception like that. I think our police chief is outstanding. He's, I've met with him. I've met with our building official, John Stone, and they absolutely always try to be fair to everybody. They try to, they, anybody who comes in, they'll sit down and talk with them. And, and I just disagree with those statements that were made. Thank you. And the only thing I have, uh, I thank everyone for coming uh, to Mike's uh, party. And it was wonderful. I think he had a great time, got uh, some really nice uh, gifts, uh, nice words. And, uh, and he really is going to enjoy the park in his name. So thank you very much for coming. Um, City Attorney, and uh, Jim, I know that you have a report for us, and then I said that I was going to take some public comment based on if, if you say something about the sign. Are you talking about No, the sign's sign? actually an agenda item. You're going to do it? Okay. Which one is Number it? nine. Okay, we'll wait for that then. Do you have anything else on The that? only other thing, um, let's follow up. Scott had called me and talked to me about it also on the phone. Um, the status regarding the rim issue is, as I sent information over to their attorney last week, I believe it ended up being there on Thursday because I couldn't email to him. Um, but 
I sent him a proposed uh, resolution to vacate the easement and make sure they didn't have any issues regarding same, and also to determine whether or not he had a legal description for the, the strip that's going to be vacated. Um, the REMS, I think, believe they had it, but once he sent it to me, the calls are off, and he, uh, their attorney was supposed to get back to me regarding the work verbiage of the um, proposed resolution, and I, I hadn't heard back from him. I called him again this morning, follow up, as I told you I would, and he, I'd never get a call back, so I'm still waiting to hear back from him regarding that issue. And as far as the, uh, the agreement with the CRA and the city, I've drafted an agreement um, at least in part predicated upon the Lauderdale Lakes Agreement, and I've sent it to Ann to see if she has any comments before we bring it to council, but there's a draft in City Hall right now, and that's all I have. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, city Manager Report. Good evening, Ann. Yes, good evening. As you, if you get to Florida today, I'm sure that you saw on the front page for the fire department, uh, the community health paramedic program. It was a great write-up. And of course, the police department took top honors at the annual Motor Unit Challenge Awards ceremony, which was really kind of a unique situation because, and that was held in Orlando, Florida. They won first place ahead of 106 other agencies of various sizes throughout the state of Florida, so that's quite an accomplishment as well. Building and Zoning Department, uh, the old Pizza Hut building at 1180 Highway A1A is in the process of being purchased, and the lien for property maintenance is over $100,000, so city code, and I don't know if Jim wants to speak to this, uh, 2.361 allows an appeal to council for a reduction in fines with regard to that, and I believe that Mr. Spurlock, who is the gentleman who uh, is in the process of purchasing that property, you'd like to come before council on August 15th to discuss that. So that's good news that that building is in the process of being purchased. How does the 15th look? Uh, Fine. It, it looks uh, good. No problem. Okay, 15th is Absolutely. Fine. Okay. Brevard County Commissioners approved uh, to contribute $100,000 to the Cassia 3 drainage project on July uh, 24th, and that, of course, is an interlocal agreement. And uh, I believe that once the agreement is signed, that a check will be remitted, uh, will be issued to Satellite Beach. And uh, three bids have come back for the State Road Landscaping and they are being reviewed and I think will be brought before council. Is that correct, Alan? We're trying to be able. Okay. Oh yes, we're gonna we're gonna put that in just before the budget meeting. It shouldn't take take long to do that if that's satisfactory. So we can get that moving. And I think that's about it. Oh. I am thinking of one thing. Uh, yes. If it would be okay, would you uh, send a letter please to Long Doggers? Uh, thanking them. I don't know how many people know, but uh, they uh, comped all the food um. on Friday night. And it was terrific, and the drink, and they said, and it was it was very nice. So we would like to send them something, both a, a thank you letter from the city and something for their, uh, for their records. Maybe uh, we could put something in the beach caster, a little tiny. I mean, that was, that was just an excellent, yeah. outstanding. Thing. So uh, we got to get over to them. Thank you very much. All right, and thank you for that report. Agenda item number seven, uh, resolution number nine one nine, and Mr. Beadle. Resolution number nine nineteen, a resolution of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, imposing an annual stormwater utility assessment for the fiscal year beginning October one two thousand twelve against all real property within the city limits of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida providing for classifications of property, providing for certification of annual stormwater utility assessment rule, providing an effective date. Thank you. Ian? Um, this is Chapter 52 of the City Code requires the City to adopt a resolution in setting stormwater assessment rate. And that's what uh, Mr. Beadle just read. And that will impose slash certify the annual stormwater utility assessment rule. And that, I understand from reading this, is the same as this year at $65. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Is that correct? Okay, let me bring it back to the council for discussion. 
Historically, it's been 65 for several years, many years, I guess. About the last, it was 62, went to 65, I don't know, it jumped four or five years ago, I think, and it's been 65 for several years. And so the way this resolution works, we do it every year at this at this time to adopt it. Okay. We, we can't run it for more than one year at a time. Okay. Okay. Any other council comments? What's our requirement this coming year on stormwater utility maintenance? What do we forecast? What do we forecast, Alan? You want to stand up? As compared to last year and the year before. As far as budgetary numbers, Brenda would have the, the details, the uh, budget details, but I know that our our debt <clears throat> is, we still have outstanding for Cassia 1 and 2, Cassia 3, and um, I think North Range is taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those, and then of course ongoing maintenance, and then any future uh, um, grants that we do have one in the coffers. I I haven't heard back from EPA whether we've been approved for that. We don't have a contract yet, so that if we did have a contract, we'd certainly come to the council for approval. But um, the uh, Glenwood trunk line we talked about um, probably six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, that is also in the planning stages. Okay. So, so this pays down debt, takes care of ongoing projects, and does the O&M. And it, yes, and the, the stormwater requirements aren't going away anytime I was going to say, and that, that's my bottom line point, is we don't see the requirement decreasing. Absolutely not. Okay. All right, at this time I'd like to open agenda item number seven for public comment. Ron Jagudis Residence, Satellite Beach. I know it's been set at $65. Um, I too am concerned about getting it higher, but I, I'm falling in a trap here of not knowing what the future obligations over the next five years are. Uh, certainly staff knows more, but are the right decisions being made now to keep this at the $65 rate when perhaps a reserve should be set aside so we have no debt issues in the going forward years. There has been numbers thrown around that we're going to be paying billions of dollars in the future for all the estuary pollution going on and we, we're just flying every year with the same amount here. I think it's too late now to do that but I stress that this year it needs to be carefully examined over the next 12 months to determine what our needs are going to be there and then go forward. You cannot change it now. You don't have the data. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? All right. At this time, I'd like to bring you back to the council for a uh, motion. Make a motion to adopt resolution number 919. Well, second, I, I just want to make a comment that I, I agree with Mr. Gerdudis. I think we need, this needs to become part of the overall um, uh, capital improvement plan mm -hmm. that, we're, that we are lacking. Um, this sort of thing needs to be in a fight, at, you know, in an out-year plan, um, so that we can flow out those numbers and know that we're and know that we're we're taking in the right amount of money. Too less, too much. Um, I agree. We're kind of flying by the seat of our pants on this one, but at this point, it's, it's Right, next. I have a motion uh, by Vice Mayor Rhodes, second by Councilman Billman. Lenore? Councilman Yes. Uh, Councilman yes. Yes. Yes, and the uh, resolution passes unanimously. Thank you, and thank you for your comments. Uh, agenda item number eight, ordinance number 1053, Mr. Beadle. Ordinance number 1053, an ordinance of the City of Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Florida, amending the FY 2011-2012 budget ordinance number 1045, providing an effective date for second reading of ordinance number 1053. Thank you. Ann? Right. This, the lead department on this is finance, and this is the budget amendment for the third quarter uh, of fiscal year 2011-2012. Good evening, Brenda. Hello. Hello. 
Um, we made the change as Mr. French had requested, and this is just on second reading. Um, if there was any questions, I can follow it up. What was the change? That we changed uh, on the second portion, section section. We made the fund balance. It said it said uh, GF, I think. Instead right. Of oh, okay. G G yeah. General fund. Thing. Right. Yeah. I remember now. All right. Uh, Council, have any uh, comments? Any comments? Huh? No, and I'll open it to the public. And I'd like to open this agenda item for public comment. Okay, at this time I'll bring it back to the council for a recommendation. I'd like to recommend approval of ordinance number 1053 on second reading. Second motion. I have a motion by Councilman Billman, second by Vice Mayor Rhodes. Lenore? Yes. 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 Yes, and the ordinance passes unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, discuss, take action on signs regulated by the city code. Anne? Well, this is, uh, the city attorney is going to take uh, on this issue and we are going to be discussing what types of signs can be regulated. However, the sign moratorium uh, discussion on that is going to take place at, on the August 16th Planning and Zoning Advisory Board and then move through the, through the process to the PZAB and then finally back to Council on September 5th because of some clarification that was necessary. But Mr. Beadle is going to address the types of signs that can be regulated and I think specifically there was concern for freedom of speech issues here. Yes. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Um, as I indicated, um, to council, I would provide some basic information um, regarding issues that arose at the uh, at the seminar, which are essentially in starting in paragraph five and the include that the enclosure in the uh, council packet. The the first part of it just basically talks about the commercial signs that are allowed in the city, and that as far as monument signs. I believe, based on what John has indicated at prior meetings, is that all of the non-conforming monuments, or all the non-conforming freestanding stop signs in the city and the commercial district are all monument. And if there are any non-conformities, it's as the setback because they were retrofitted in place. Um, the and this, and then I think this has also come up before is is that there is language in our code that indicates that all other signs that are not otherwise included in the table that's in the code are generally prohibited in the city. Um, <clears throat> as background, and it relates, I believe, to the case that Mr. Headley was referring to at the last meeting, it rose in the city of St. Louis, and there was a person that um, put a free expression sign on the side of a building that was about 360 square feet that was a non-eminent domain or against eminent domain for, um, I, if I recall correctly, it was for a redevelopment. And it was a large circular sign with a, you know, the cross through it and, you know, something to the effect of no eminent domain. And what the Eighth Circuit did was they struck down their sign code because of the signs that they allowed to be included in their code and as the speaker indicated he was showing the sign or the things that were that the court uh, reviewed and there some of those are in here as to why I suggested what they did is is that the, um, one of their arguments was is that it was a mural and that it was art and therefore it wasn't covered by the code. Another one was that um, a couple, there's actually two other cases that are going to trial. Uh, one's in Virginia and the other's in North Carolina um, regarding signs similar to this. Um, one somebody painted on their house, across the front of their house, um, not on a sign, they made their house the sign. And then, um, and then the other one had, I, I don't believe, I, don't, I can't remember if he actually had a picture of the sign, but some of the ordinances basically said that holiday decorations were exempt from their sign ordinance. So the court looked at, well, if you're going to allow holiday decorations, then why can't you allow these other forms of expression as well? Um, which is why I'm suggesting that we specifically provide that holiday decorations are not to be considered or construed to be signs. Um, 
But so basically what it appears to be is, you know, the, the sign code probably should be tightened up to deal with those kinds of issues if the council wants to deal with that because we, we do not have any specific regulation regarding quote unquote free expression or First Amendment signs. You can regulate them. Most of them regulate them similar to political signs. Political signs and free expression signs are not generally construed to be the same thing. Um, the Supreme Court basically said that, you know, free expression signs, are, you know, are basically sacrosanct um, uh, as long as they're on your property, so to speak. Um, because what, what, the, what the court looks at or the courts look at when you try to eliminate an avenue of expression is, is whether there's a, you know, reasonable alternative avenues of communication available for an individual to speak. And the court essentially said that somebody putting up a sign in their yard, there really is no other reasonable alternative than to allow them to do that. So you get back to what I was alluding to at the last meeting about reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. and. Generally speaking, most codes have those, and they relate to essentially the same square footage that you allow for political signs. Um, one of the issues that came up also in conversation was is what ability the city would have to regulate the timing of political signs, and generally speaking, the courts will allow you to do that as long as it's, again, not unreasonable. Um, in other words, you don't have to allow political signs to be out there as political signs year-round. Um, one of the things that they also talk about with commercial signs is that you um, want to allow them to substitute commercial speech for free speech. In other words, like some of these people that have the, um, the signs where you can change the message on the sign, it shouldn't be a violation of the code that they can put something up there that's more free, you know, free expression versus the actual commercial speech. Um, I know that in discussions with John that we don't prohibit that, but the guy basically said that it, it's probably better to actually have that contained in the code. Um, Then the, one of the uh, couple of the other things have to do with more technical stuff about the severability clauses, expanding that. Um, one issue about the banners is, you know, is that going to be considered to be a flag or not? And you know, how many flags are you quote unquote going to allow to be on any particular site? Because again, the problem that you have is is most people think that signs are something that you can regulate because it's a sign, but the courts look at it as First Amendment, and that just changes the entire context of how you evaluate it. So whenever you do anything with signage and square footage, you have to look at it not just in the context of pure regulation, but also in how it impacts the speech issue. Um, and I'm, I think those, those are the highlights. There's a couple other things um, that are in here, but I think those are the, the highlights of what was discussed at the meeting. And if there's any questions, I can answer them. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there will be. OK, I'll bring it back to council and then open up public discussion. Council, uh, questions? So the uh, Planning and Zoning Board can review all these like, all, all these things on here, the, 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 what do they call them, feather banners, feather right. flags, those type of things. Uh, the freedom of speech signs, that would be uh, limited possibly just to residential, not, not the commercial. Yes, um, be because you're allowing, that's what I'm saying, as long as you allow the substitution on the commercial signs, then all that, that can be related strictly to the residential district. And so, so we'll task them to, to, to review these, these findings of yours. Okay. Jim, that's, that's for the, the planning and zoning, but uh, you know, one of the things that we wanted to know is what was going on in the city, and, and, every, and so nothing has changed, is that right? Anybody can have any sign on their well, well, property that, because it's a reasonable alternative for someone to speak, is that what we're saying? Correct, but the issue is there's really nothing in here regulating the size of that expression. 
But it, it, it has to be on, on uh, their property. Pers personal property, oh. correct. Not, com not, not any, if they own a business, can it be on a commercial property? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, that's one of the things that needs to be looked at is, is if you're going to do it on a commercial, it should be on the regular sign okay. facade where you can substitute the, the message, so to speak. Okay. Does anybody have anything? Councilman from Medina? Do you say anything? Okay. So actually what I'm um, hearing is there's no change. There's yeah. No change. And you know, the, <clears throat> the libertarian in me says anything goes. And, and you know, all the free expression should be allowed. People should be able to see, say whatever they want to say um, without restriction. Um, and I would imagine that in a civil society like ours, um, the tenor and the content of the signs is going to be kind of self-regulating. I mean, either by personal integrity, neighbors, friends, those sorts of things. So the, the only issue I would have, and it doesn't matter if it's self-expression or, or, or a commercial or political, is a safety issue. And that would be a placement kind of a thing. You know, you don't want them in the right of way so that you, you, know, you can't see traffic coming out and those sorts of things. But anything else I say is good to go. All right. Well, I, let, let me open agenda item number nine for public comment. Uh, yeah, I had a question somewhat related. I understand that. Skip, uh, oh, oh, Skip Bollinger, resident. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, just for the record. Sorry. We know who you are. Um, <laughs> thank you. Did, I, I believe I just heard that all of the previously non-conforming signs in the city had finally been brought up to the new standard. What, what, did I understand Mr. Beadle correctly? Or That's my understanding, yeah. yes. Okay. The, com the commercial sign, yes. The freestanding commercial sign. Okay. My question is that, now I know there was some private money went into that. There was also some taxpayer money, CRA money. I would like to know what was the total cost to the taxpayers of the city of Satellite Beach for that program to make all these signs conform to someone's idea of what was aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Also, I would like to know what was the ROA, what was the return on investment for this signage retrofit grant program. In other words, if it cost us, pick a number, $200,000 to retrofit all these signs, how much new business did it bring into Satellite Beach? How much additional tax revenue has been derived from having this program? Okay, my, my objection to these programs is not that I don't want the place to look nice, the business owner has an interest in making his own business attractive, <coughs> okay? And since it doesn't come under the heading of law enforcement, uh, public safety, or infrastructure, I don't see what, why the city is involved in this in the first place. It just, it just doesn't seem right. The, the people that were taxed, to upgrade all these signs perhaps had a better purpose for the money that they were taxed. They could buy their kid a new suit of clothes, they could send them to college, they could their their grandmother could have the operation, but instead we're upgrading signs that prior to the upgrade, many of them were serving the purpose of the owner quite well. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And we are uh, regulating, uh, talking about regulating the city signs. Any balance of public comment? Dana? Dana Gilman, resident. Um, I have said this before. I'm one of the people. I like the, the new sign ordinance. I mean, I, I agree we need to have some uh, flexibility in it. But my my problem is if all of a sudden we just cancel everything, we go willy-nilly and everything is good to go, we have spent all this money on getting signs to look a certain way. We force people to buy into these signs. And now that was a colossal waste of money. And I would be very irritated if I were one of the businesses that was not allowed to maintain 
maintain my sign or was forced into at great expense to me, and now all of a sudden anyone can put anything that they want out there. I do think we need to have some control and some regulation. I think we should allow people to express. I, I don't think we should be impinging upon that, but I think we do need to keep some modicum of control with what we have and not just be willy-nilly because all of a sudden we become the plaza that houses Tootsies. And I don't know. I don't think that's attractive. I don't think that generates business. It must or they wouldn't have do it. But I really don't think that's what the residents have in, as an idea of what we want in Satellite Beach. Thank you. Sir, Mr. Hinton. Charles Hinton, I'm a resident of the city. Uh, I think it's a stretch to consider that Christmas decorations are, are a sign. I can't. Uh, I think that's just throw, goes out, and I don't. I think this is this is a self-limiting thing. It's a certain seasonal thing, and it would appear to me that's kind of irrelevant. I would like to comment on on the sign though. If you've got State Road Three going north, and you come up to the 520, and you look out ahead of you, you see. The awfulest mess of signs. If some people try to get their sign higher than everybody, there's all kinds of signs there, and it is ugly. And I would think that you would you would not want to have that kind of a situation, a person coming in the satellite beach, signs on the roof, tall signs, all kinds of signs, some up kept or not. I think we ought to have some sort of order to that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other public comment? Steve? Um, I'm kind of distressed, and, and I want to make sure I understand the term that you used, to tighten up the city code. If anything, the city code should be loosened. Um, I, I'm sorry. What signs I have on my property are absolutely no business of the city of Satellite Beach whatsoever. If, if courts have ruled that I can go up to a police officer and tell him to off or give him the finger, and that's considered expression, I have no reason to, to understand why we're looking to regulate any type of speech. This thing of one person or one sign per candidate per lot is ridiculous. If I want to load my, my property up with signs for, for Greg Goldman, I find nothing wrong with that, as long as it's not infringing upon a safety issue. If you're going to make a turn and can't see around it, whatever. That's different to me. And I mean that sincerely. I understand that portion of it. But we have signs in this, 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 this county or the city that are being ripped off. You mentioned your signs, your political signs were and, um, stolen last year. There's another, another citizen who was having his signs being stolen. There's police reports. And in essence, when you talk about being civil, being civil means allowing a different point of view, and we're not. And that bugs the snot out of me, um, which kind of means I'm snotless, but that's a different story. Um, as far as, yeah, I know it's off track. <laughs> as far as commercial signs, I'm sorry to say this, but the 500-pound gorilla in this discussion is a green and white building known as Publix. They are the 500-pound gorilla in this because I see people talking about the smaller businesses, but yet Publix runs a banner sign on Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Labor Day, Memorial Day, and Fourth of July, well beyond the three per year that they're allowed, and nobody does anything about it. If we're not going to pick on Publix, if we're not going to hold Publix accountable, then we shouldn't hold to some guy who's in a thousand square foot building to that same code. I don't care about the code so much. I care about its applicability evenly across the spectrum. Thank you. Thank you. So the public comment. All right. I'm just going to bring it back and just want to say, uh, Jim, thanks for those words. Uh, the, the discussion was generated by some uh, freedom of speech signs that were uh, that were placed. And I would just tell the public that I'm um, looking at the schedule. On the 16th of August, which is a Thursday, the PZAB, the Planning and Zoning Board, We'll have a workshop on signs. 
and I believe that will be here. I know that Councilman French is also having, I think, a town hall meeting that night, mm -hmm. so there may be a little conflict with that. And then the PZAB is going to have their regular meeting on the 20th of August. So the signs, if you're very interested, or just as you are tonight, we're going to take direction from the PZAB. The PZAB uh, will discuss this on the 16th. It is at 7 p.m. I believe it is here. I'll let you know. I'll let you know next week. But that's what I think. It'll be on the website. I believe it's here. So that's where you can also get your comments in because they're going to give direction to the city council. Jim, I just want to add one thing. Anecdotally, most of the the materials for the that people gave for the presentations were say 10 to 20 pages. The signed one was 190 pages. Wow. <laughs> and, and I just want to make one point as well. I mean, the freedom of speech signs, it's not that I have an issue with freedom of speech, but it was the placement of some of those signs, i.e., in front of Delore Middle School with a photo taken of it uh, at City Hall. So that, that becomes a, a different issue, I think. You, you know, putting it on your property is one thing, but then putting it on school board property for at City Hall property becomes another issue. So. Um, yeah. That's where there was a fair and, and, that's what, and, to be, and to be honest, uh, I talked to Chief who called me earlier and said that anybody who does that will be charged with trespassing. Okay. Thank you. So uh, those meetings we'll discuss, or at least I know the first one we'll discuss signs. I'm not sure what the second PCA meeting, uh, AB meeting will be about. Okay. Well, the, and first, but Mayor, the first is the workshop, and then the second is an actual meeting of the PCAB. To, to vote on? Oh, yes. Oh, to, to, to vote bring on that, and, and the then that will be brought before Council on September 5th. Okay, thank you, Ann. Uh, all right. And thank, should, should, we, should we, is there anything to vote on here? I mean, I, I think we all agree that freedom of expression signs on private property should be unregulated. Can we at least agree on that? or? Do, I think that's in the that, or is that by all? default in the reg, or by default allowable. Well, the the issue is is whether or not council wants to propose or suggest, however you want to say it, in the time, place, or manner regulation regarding the co-creative expression signs. In other words, do you want to say they can be the same size as political signs? Do you want to say they have to have the same setbacks as political signs? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we just allow the, these recommendations to go to the planning and planning? I think the PCAB has to go. Yeah. I think if we dictate to them, then we're doing that backwards. Mm -hmm. But then come back with a recommendation. I was going to say, could we uh, vote on a sense of council to go to PCAB that, that freedom of expression signs on personal property are not to be hindered? I mean, is that appropriate or not? <laughs> there could be allowed. There could be allowed. There could be allowed. Well, you can't prohibit them. So, I mean, that's, okay. That's well, then there you go. Yeah. The issue is, the it's issue law. Is, it's yeah, law. You can't, you can't okay. prohibit them. The issue is whether or not you regulate certain aspects. Of okay. It. So, so it's like actually, that. it's not on the books. It's not on our books. So we need to put that in there. Thank so you. it's it's a political science size. You can't take a piece of plywood and right. spray paint it with something in your yard just because it's your freedom of speech. If right. it's a little political sign that size, then that's allowable <laughs> with whatever message you'd like. Okay, uh, we have a, a series of agenda items that do, deal with uh, RFPs. The first one is Grant Writing Services, agenda item number 10. Ian? Right, and this is uh, informational. Uh, this is, in, in general, a, uh, a grant, uh, a request for proposal for grant writing services. And, of course, each proposal would be, uh, you know, everything would be tailored to the type of grant, too, that you are, are looking at. So this is um, deals with, of course, there's an introduction, there's a deadline for submission of proposals, background, uh, proposal requirements, and selection. Now, this one that's presented to us, though, this is for a grant writer, though, right? Well, that is true. This one is for actual grant writing services. Okay. And, and this one does say that we're going to pay by grant? Well, it, there would be a a percentage. A percentage, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, oh. That is certainly one way of doing but, it. But it's a pay-as-you-go concept. That's because that's what we were looking. Correct. Pay-as-you-go concept, and the payment is based upon the percentage of the grant. This is what we are talking about Perfect. here. Perfect. 
I, I saw that someplace. Mm -hmm. It just has B structure. It doesn't explain what the B structure would be on under five A. Five A. Page three or three. I mean, I think we've made it pretty clear how we want to handle this as a percenter, so I think we need okay. to clarify that. But maybe I read into that. Let me see. Yeah, I, I thought I missed that too. Yeah, I'll put the percentage in there. And and I don't see it explicitly say, stated that this is a that this is a pay as you go sort of a service, unless I'm missing it somewhere. No, you did, you're not missing it. Say again. I, I didn't see it in there either. Okay, that should be in section, uh, that should be in A then. Yeah. Anything else? You know, in uh, some cities, you pay for the grant, win or lose. In other cities, mm -hmm. there's a percentage of the grant that goes towards if you win. I'm not sure if this is a, uh, I know in, in Karen's the city, they do pay as you go, but it's $5,000 a grant, win or lose. Well, I, 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 believe, I don't think I don't, we've talked about this before. I, I don't want to just haphazardly just apply for all these grants just so someone can get paid. Exactly. I, I want to make sure. Is, isn't it five? I think it's I think it's five grand win or lose, but we don't we we don't, we don't, I don't know if we want to do that. I thought we had talked about the percentage of a win. I thought that's what we talked about. I thought so also. Yeah. So, because that that would be uh, that would be better because not a flat rate, but a percentage. If mm -hmm. it's a million dollar contract, they stand to. Well, and maybe the percent the percentages oftentimes increase or decrease depending on the size of the grant. So, if you had a two million dollar grant and you were, let's say, giving five percent, you wouldn't necessarily do five percent there. That someone would do, you know, make five percent on a twenty thousand dollar grant or more, ten percent, fifteen, whatever it may be. So that would be a sliding scale depending on the size. The only thing I brought up with that, and I'll just bring it up for council is that sometimes it takes two years for a grant to be awarded. Somebody may not want to wait two years to see if we're going to pay them. But that, that, that may be to begin the proposal. Yeah, we'll see how the proposals come in. OK, then I'll make those changes. Okay. Thank you. Any other notes, Council? Let me uh, open up agenda item number 10 for uh, public comment. Ron? Ron Jagutis, Satellite Beach resident. Uh, what was the final percentage you d determined for the payment, or is it a sliding scale, or what? Yes, uh, we didn't decide. You did not. We're open to suggestions, Mr. Jagutis. Okay. And then, kind of hard to find, well, you got to pull some data on that, but I kind of, excuse me, <laughs> I kind of find it hard to look at A in one of the parts where the grant writers define the methodology for what we need. Uh, shouldn't we already know what we need? Or at least have a handle of what we need to pursue? As far as grant writing, for instance, for police, we may need equipment for uh, drainage, stormwater. We may need grants on stormwater. I, I thought we have had some place to find this. Uh, I, we, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought we would have goals already in this to, to define to the people that this is what we're looking for. Yeah, and after all the years of writing grants in the city, I would have thought that there would be a some sort of a grant plan. Good point. And then uh, one other thing here is we can all write grants, but perhaps the, the grant writers uh, whoever comes up and does this, and maybe it involves an additional cost, or maybe the city can handle this uh, with its own staff, is to know the initial grant is written, but as usual, you have to maintain this grant property, maintain these facilities that you've created. Mm -hmm. You've got to know going forward what the recurring costs are on the grant, and that should be a deciding factor up front to know if you're going to pursue the grant, what the recurring costs are to be to, be to maintain the property or, or go forward with it. 
Uh, that perhaps should be added to the requirements. Yeah. Okay. To the requirements. To the requirements. I kind of, I can't give you a percentage right now of what their average is, but I'm sure there's got to be a way for city staff to find that out and come up with an average on that. Um, there was one other point that I was going to make, but it slipped out. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Sir. Charles Hitler, I'm a city resident. The experience that I've had with grants is whenever you, you look at, at the application, the application will give you in great detail what it is that you are supposed to, uh, all, the, all that you have to submit with the grant. So um, I, I saw a newspaper article three or four days ago, something like that, that the Cocoa Beach, they had a person who was retiring or leaving, and they gave him great applause because he had obtained $5 million in grants for Cocoa Beach. Um, whenever you begin to look, you have to look at what your percentage rate is on this against having a staff person who is a grant writer and is a professional to do that. Now, I was, I was told that the previous grant writers brought into the city $20 million. Now, if that's true, and you don't know this, you're going to have to make a comparison with what is the salary of one or two grant writers versus what that percentage rate, if they were successful on the grant, would have cost. And, and without the, the percentage rate, sometimes go 5% or something, of the grant can be used on the administration of the grant. So uh, you open yourself up. If you're going to get 1% and this person is going to get a $5 million grant, uh, you, 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 you can be on a lose-lose situation because it's going to, you're going to give him a higher uh, amount in the grant than what he would have been if he was on staff or on salary. Now I know that in your ability to sweep things clean, one of the first actions that you took when you became with the new council was that you fired the grant writers. And I wonder if this was an effort to, to get rid of the old guard and start over someplace without really recognizing that the grant writers were 20, bringing 20 million bucks into the city, that's kind of free money. And if you had somebody who was tremendously successful with this, and, and you peremptorily fire them for some uh, unknown reason without knowing whether or not you're making a big profit on, on their effort. So you need, to, you need to look at the salary that somebody might pay versus how much you would have to pay if the grant was successful at a large amount. Thank you, sir. Uh, other public comment? Okay. Pat Sands, resident. Um, have you decided how much you would pay a grant writer if the grant was refused for some reason? How are you going to accommodate that issue? That's just a question. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Skip? Yeah, Skip Bollinger, resident. Uh, I, I got to take exception to the previous speaker when he said these grants are free money. Okay, if the the, the case would be if a, if a Bill Gates or a Donald Trump or someone like that had had was donating his own money to a cause and wanted to grant some of that to Satellite Beach, that's fine. I got no problem with that. But when the grant comes from Tallahassee, or if it comes from Brevard County, or if it comes from the federal government, it's not free money. It is money that other citizens have been taxed for, and every dollar of it had to be earned by some poor guy at, at whatever his occupation is, and forced to pay taxes that goes to Washington or Tallahassee 
and then it gets redistributed toward people who maybe didn't earn it. And while somebody in Pahokee is paying for us to replace signs, we're paying for a library annex in Mariana or something like that, and it's all money that has been collected under false pretenses. The guy in, that paid the taxes in Pahokee didn't know that that his taxes were going to fix signs in Satellite Beach. And the Satellite Beach resident doesn't know that he's contributing to a library or uh, getting a, a sign painted in some other part of the state. The whole thing is corrupt. Now, it may be legal, but it's still wrong. Now, the other thing I would bring up since we're trapped into this, if we don't get it, somebody else will mentality. If you're going to pay grant writers a percentage of the size of the grant that they acquire, that means that a, a ten or fifteen thousand dollar grant for uh, replacing badly needed hoses for the fire department will take a back seat to a ten million dollar grant to improve the landscaping around the police department. That's all I'm saying is it, 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 how do you, once once you do it as a percentage of the dollar value of the grant that you're applying for, uh, how do we establish priorities since some of these things, the replacement of hoses is a periodic need of the fire department. Landscaping is something that can usually be done by volunteers. And But uh, I just as an example, some of these grants do go for landscaping improvements. And it's how do we prioritize? If we're spending our own money, we tend to know the priorities of, of our family's needs. When we're spending other people's money and it's unlimited, uh, we tend to not be so picky about what's important. Thank you. Dean. Dean. Dana Bellman, resident. Maybe I don't understand it correctly, but if we're putting out um, bids for people to go out and look for grants, I mean, there's a lot of people that do that as an occupation. Why don't they come to us if we could have a list or however we put out what we're looking for? Why do we only have to have a grant writer or one grant writer service? We could have other multiple ones, and other people might come to us. Instead of us inventing the wheel, why don't they let that tell us? When you guys go look for your contracts, it's not just one person that goes, and bids on the contract. So we might have some somebody out here looking for a contract here, but somebody's ex, other's expertise may be in IT. They may come to us and show us that there's a grant out there that they think would be really good for our city and our city could use. They put together a proposal and say, I want to go after. This is what my fee structure would be. And I go look for that grant. And I, I don't understand why we can't have more than one person or one anything doing any of this. I mean, let the market tell us what the good fee structure is, how many people we need looking for grants. I think there are some people, obviously some of the small grants probably take a lot less time, a lot less um, lead time from when the grant is a, a put out for bid and it's awarded, so you get your money a lot faster. Maybe there are people that want to go out and look for smaller things because they do multiple ones. There might be other groups that go out and they only do massive contracts and they have the support structure to be able to do that. So we could use various people for different things. I don't think we should get us ourselves tied into one little pigeonhole for that. Um, and we have been paying someone on salary, whether they were awarded a grant or weren't awarded a grant, we had to pay those funds. If we pay it based on a percentage of what we're doing, when there is no grants out there and times are lean, we're not spending money. The city is saving money. When there's a plethora of grants, we may have four people out there finding grants for our city. So I just think it gives us flexibility, and in these economic times, that's what we need. Thank you. Well, the public comment. Okay, I'm going to bring it back to the council uh, to discuss uh, this agenda item and uh, uh, give the city manager direction on uh, what we'd like to do for this. And do you know some of the neighboring municipalities, say Indian Harbor, some of the others, do they have grant writers that are independent that submit grants for them, or are most of them on staff? Or 
I can check. I don't. I know Indian Harbor Beach wouldn't have a grant writer on staff, but um, you know maybe they do have uh, a number of different entities that they do deal with. So I can certainly check that out. I really like the idea of a IDIQ kind of a concept, the indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity concept. In other words, um, I, well, let me back up. I agree with Skip. I think grants are are. Are, are inherently evil, but here we are. Um, that's how we that's how we live day to day. So we have to deal with it. Um, given that, I like the IDIQ concept. I like the you know maybe we should modify the the RFP in such a way that we ask for uh, grant uh, writers to bring potential grants to the city, and then we make the decision on which ones they go after, and we pay them based upon selecting that grant. That makes sense, Ann? I'm not sure how that would work. It, it might, and I can I can look into that. I mean, it's a, it's business. an interesting it's yeah. an interesting way. I, I'm, I know that you will get across your desk from time to time that a grant is available, mm -hmm. and then what you do with that uh, piece of information uh, would generate this either either bring it to the council right. and say, hey, I have a grant. Uh, uh, for for this, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, talking with John when when John was a grant writer, I know that there is a, a book out there that talks about grants that are available. Uh, and I'm not saying that you would go out and necessarily look for them, but they would come to you. They do come to city managers. Uh, uh, I've heard that in other cities. Mm -hmm. That so so I think that that's and the other thing uh, I do want to say is about grants. We did have grants, but we're, uh, the council is now, I think, under the uh, uh, the direction that we don't have money to put in matching funds. So our grants are limited to non-matching funds. We we just don't have a million dollar grant to put in two hundred fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars. We don't have. We just haven't had that money in a little while, so that's another thing that has happened to grants for us. Not to mention the tail money. Well, the tail. Yeah, I mean, how much? You know, if you get, if you get, uh, yeah, and this happens in the police department, and this happened. They'll give us sixty thousand dollars in this, but in two years that goes away. Yeah, you know, so, so, tax so, so it's it's uh, we we started to look at that, but we try to do uh, grants with no no matching funds. If we have to match funds, we. It's really hard to find. Yeah. And I've been told those are drying up more and more, too, that there are less, uh, you know. Zero. The, exactly. The, the zero. Uh, I know. It's just different. Well, do you have enough direction on, on Yes, RFP? I think so. There are a couple different things that I can investigate on this, then. Okay. Let's press on agenda item number 11, then, uh, which is uh, RFP or uh, for qualifications in general. Yeah. Is, what is this? This is really just a discussion item because it had been asked, well, you know, what about RFPs and RFQs? And so I just did a little bit of research, and there are some definitions here for the, what, what is a request for proposal. Not everyone knows what those are, or a co request for a quotation, and some of the objectives, and, and just basically what could be in included in the RFQ or RFP. So that's kind of a general uh, situation there and covers a couple of pages and a couple different uh, details. And then there's an example uh, of the Cape, uh, city of Cape Canaveral, which is a more detailed for more of a professional engineering and uh, planning, surveying, consulting, and architectural services. So it's a little bit more detailed. But I tell you, the one you really need to look at, which is coming up next, is item 12 from Alan Potter, which is an excellent RFP that he obviously, you know, specifically for his purposes. And that's the issue, I think, with RFPs and RFQs is something really to remember. There's a general plan, but it's very deep. It, it can be very detailed or not quite so detailed, and it really does, in fact, depend on the type of, of service or good or product that you are soliciting. So there are general guidelines, but certainly, um, you know, the more detailed you are about what you are looking for, 
um, chances are you'll be more able to get that product. On the other hand, if maybe you're even looking for an expansion of some services that you're really not even sure exactly almost how to define it, maybe an RF. Q, you know, that will give you a little bit more of a wider base and people might even say, well, we're going to add, we can add this, this, and this, let's say, to planning services and this is what you'll get and you think, well, this will work well with the city. So there are a number of different ways of approaching this. So this was just basically an informational uh, uh, bit, uh, bit here for you. I, I, I do have a question because I'm a little confused. Um, it says RFP and RFQ request for quotation. I thought it was request for qualification. Well, this, this is a request for, for quotation here. Um, and then there's also an RFQ you can do for, for qualifications. There are several different uh, options. I thought one. I thought an RFQ was when you're, you're soliciting certain qualifications of the surveying. <coughs> They're all surveyors, but then they come back and negotiate. It's also RFQ is called also request for quotation. Interestingly enough, okay. yeah, the one for Cape Canaveral is the RFQ qualifications. That's what I thought yeah. right. was. Okay. Not a quotation. What, what, what did we? What instrument did we use for the Peg Lakes property? Was that that was an RFI, wasn't it? We I don't. Yeah, yeah, but I think we're doing an RFI. Be an yeah. RFI. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Is there? An and that was the appropriate vehicle, I think, for what we were trying to do there. Is there an RFA? An R no, I was just kidding. <laughs> I mean, how many RF? Well, a lot of RF. Well, RFI, RFQ, and RFPs. I'm familiar with. But. So these are, this is just informational. Thank you. Uh, does, does anybody have uh, any information I'd like to press on to number 12, and then we can discuss uh, a real RFQ? Uh, okay. RFP. RF, RF, RFP. RFP. All right. Let's do agenda item number 12, uh, which is okay, an RFP for cleaning services at the David R. Sheck, the Community Center. Ian? And Alan's going to take this one because he wrote this and knows exactly what we have here. Hey, Alan. Good evening, everyone. RFPs, RFQs, RFIs, 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 EIEIO. They want to request for additional information. In dealing with storm water around, you get so many acronyms. It's, well, being in the military, there's that's acronym city. So, um, what we have here tonight is a uh, request for proposal that Carrie and I worked on for cleaning services at the Schechter Center. Um, the problem that we're having now is that we have one part-time person that cleans that entire building, less the the team zone. He doesn't do the team. The, doesn't do the team zone, but does clean, cleans the gym and cleans the, um, the Schechter Center it's an in its entirety. Um, and I should say kind of cleans because one part-time person cannot get to everything that needs to be done in that building um, and, and have it a quality job. They try, believe me, they try, but you know, there's only so many hours in a day and there's only you know, so many hours that we can pay for. Um, Earlier this year, we lost a full-time um, position, and what I would like to do is to put the RFP out to see what kind of prices we get back um, using that salary as a base. We replace, to not replace that position, but use that salary, um, the funds from that salary to pay for the, uh, the cleaning services at the Shecker Center. Um, like I said, basically the trade out. Um, the RFP is pretty um, defined as far as the, the uh, scope of work. I've also added and added an alternate into the RFP um, that would uh, give, us, give us a cost for the contractor bidding job to provide the cleaning supplies. Um, for that, that would also um, decrease our janitorial uh, supply monitoring and budget. This year alone, in overtime, we've spent $9,433. In comp time, 325 hours at time and a half, um, it is $8,350 for a total of $7,000. 
17,784. That's just since October. Prior to October, we were also spending uh, overtime and comp time hours because of the, the janitorial staff, the, the janitorial supervisor whose position was eliminated in October was on um, FMLA leave for personal reasons. So we had to fill in that slot. Um, the one question I have for you in this RFP, if you decide to move forward with it, is the local vendor option. Uh, we did have that in the uh, vendor proposal for uh, Pelican Park, and I think it was pretty uh, home to that to that specific proposal. I don't know if you want to think about broadening that or this RP if like I said if you decide to go forward. Uh, but uh, maybe something to think about. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Uh, good job on this. Let me bring it back to council. Scott. Um, just want to review over the last two years. I know we've used Remar cleaning services. Um, I don't know how many years, but it's a few years, right? And they cleaned uh, a lot of c the city hall and the community center and the uh, sector center stuff. So we kind of have an idea what cost might be and, and uh, scope of work and that type of thing or no? Well, the scope of work actually was, was taken um, from that original proposal uh, with a few modifications that, that Carrie and I made. Um, the Remark contract worked well for a while. Uh, but um, it got to be kind of pricey. Right now, I think, given the um, <coughs> climate, I think we could probably get some really big pricing back as far as you know, cleaning because it is the for one building. Mm -hmm. The more they were doing the uh, beach, the clubhouse at the beach, they were also cleaning the civic center, and we had a part-time person cleaning uh, city hall in the police department. So. You know, we're, we're going to kind of keep it just to the, the Shecker Center, so hopefully that will bring the cost down. Oh, I'm sure it will bring the cost down. Could, could, could we find, but on that same line of discussion, could we find uh, more efficiency by having this service do the, all the city um, uh, uh, buildings? W would, we, would there be an FTE we could save there somewhere? You know, it, that may be an option. I just think that if you broaden the scope, that you're you're opening up the cost factor. Well, sure you are, but yeah. if you're saving an FTE or more, well, you'd be saving a part time because we only we only have one part time person doing it. Okay. Unless we're gonna, you know, because actually, who's doing all of the city right now? I mean, uh, this one time, this no. one time person's doing the shifter thing. Well, I have. The guys that are working in the daytime are coming in earlier. They're staying late to clean the police department. City okay, hall. so you're paying overtime for that, right? So how much overtime are we paying for them to do the other city, the other city uh, uh, buildings? I would say out of the ninety-four hundred dollars that we we pay, we probably I'd probably say four thousand dollars that for city hall and the police department. Okay. And the cost on hours as well as 325. Right. I'd say maybe half of that is City Hall and the police department. Okay. I just want, I mean, yeah, we would be opening up to, to a larger cost, but we may find that that larger cost is actually more efficient in the long run if we can decrease the overtime and, and uh, comp time factor. I don't know. It, it, it may be worth at least looking asking right well that's that's kind of the, the reason why I wanted to do this is that way we get because there is we don't have to take anybody we can just reject all the proposals if we can't afford it this would give us a good idea of what we would have on a broader scale and <laughs> yeah, but sometimes when you go out for a contract if you're giving them more business you're going to get you're going to get a low, lower overall price that's good if, if they know that they're going to have more business than just that one building they may be more apt to come in with the with a lower price I think we should go back, personally, I think we should go back and redo the RFP and ask for the entire city and see what happens. And then we can pare it down if, 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 it, if it doesn't work. I can do that. Or, or you, could, you could draw up the RFP to ask for that, to ask for, okay, give us a price for the entire city, 
and give us a price for just the community center. That sounds good. And see, that'd be an interesting delta yeah. to look at. Yeah, we could add that to this as an additive alternate, just like I did with the clean spot. I like. Uh, I'm in, I'm in favor of uh, attempting to contract out some services. Uh, as you know, I think it I think it's good. I think it may relieve some. Uh, you know, as we talked at the budget. Uh, from your people that are working uh, sunrise to sunset, and I think it'd be good, Alan. I want to talk about termination cancel cancellation clause number ten. Uh, it just says the city shall have the right to unilaterally cancel, terminate, or suspend this contract in whole or in part if the city deems performance has not been satisfactory. Uh, do we need a time frame, Jim? Is that immediately? Is that? Uh, uh, Five days upon notification. Uh, how would how should we uh, uh, word word termination? I know in in previous RFPs I've seen where they um, they give like two weeks in writing or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I. It's up to council is what they want to have in there. Because I think if you're not getting a good job, two weeks is too long. Yeah. Right. That's why I mean, it's just, I mean, if you're not getting a good job, we we'll say, well, in two weeks, we're not going to pay you. We say, well, I won't see you for two weeks. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'm i not sure. I'd like that. You can substitute immediately for unilateral. See if it impacts the number of bids or the number of people that are in the Okay. I, I, think, I, I think we have some sort of a time frame for cancellation. I'd rather not just leave it open-ended. So immediately in place of unilateral? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, that conveys what the mayor's issue is. Thank you. And, and I like the idea of going out for the city and and maybe select, you know, I said the Shekta Center, but maybe the parks, the Shekta Center. Can you, can you list each item? And have a price for it? Give us a give us like a package price package. and give us a menu price. Hmm. You know, that because how many is Samson's Island included on that? Samson's Island. Yeah, because we send <laughs> yeah. how many people do we send out to Sam? I mean, we spend a lot we, of hours. We on. send um, lately because we we've been so you know uh, you know strapped as far as people goes. Um, we've been going out there maybe twice a month. Going out there and dumping trash and things like that because I mean you have to get in the boat. You're you have to go out there. On Samson Island? <laughs> yeah, you don't let us dump trash. On oh, I see. <laughs> no. Uh, so, well, so, we so, up the so, trash. So, oh, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Dump it into another trash can and take it away. But uh, so Samson's Island, uh, no, not not as. I think that would be a logistical nightmare myself. Mm -hmm. but. Try, trying for someone to get out there. Yeah, that, that, I think logistically that would be a little difficult. Okay. Here you're talking city hall, the police station. Right. We all the police station, the um, probably the civic center, mm -hmm. um, the checker center, and the if house. you wanted to include the the um, clubhouse, um, and I don't know how much further you want to go. Do you want to include the beach bathroom, the beach restrooms? You know, that's a that's a everyday thing there, yeah. twice a day. I like the idea of uh, menu, <gasps> menu and an overall and whole enchilada. I think that's really. Uh, See what we can get and see if we can save that piece. I would like to see, uh, though, that the um, paragraph in there regarding local vendor um, prioritization. Yeah, I, I have an issue with that only because we're, we're so small and you're trying to pull. It's a pretty big service they're providing to the city, and we're, we're only so big. Satellite Beach is only so big. So when we say local, in this case, it's a big difference between a snow cone vendor and then we're, you know, maybe pulling somebody from Melbourne who I would consider local because they provide larger services. We than do what we have here in Can we do like a, like, a, like a diameter maybe? A regional. Okay. Yeah, like within 100 I mean, you're not miles or within 50 miles or within 20. But <laughs> within 20 miles. Maybe. I just think your pool would be too small to get. You could do within sure. Brevard County. Right. The county would like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. that's but it would also incentivize the other other vendors to be aware that you know they have to be there's other local vendors that'll be if they're within five percent or whatever that number is you know, you know they sharpen their five five percent. sharpen their pencils you know right so but now uh, let me ask the council and then I'm going to open it up for public comment can we let Alan go ahead with these changes and and uh, and let this RFP I think so I think so, I think so. okay let me open up uh, this uh, RFP for uh, public comment.
Dana? Dana Bowman, I'm a resident and I'm not bidding on it, but can someone come in, like, does someone have to be able to do all of it and then you obtain the visual piece? Or if there's somebody that does just bathroom cleaning, can they just put in a RFP for the bathroom cleaning? Or does it have to be... I, th I, I think we could say all or any part. Okay. I, or no. I think, I think you'll run into right. a, a little bit of an issue with Too just many. bathroom cleaning because, you know, like, like say Pelican Park, you, you can say, okay, you're going to clean the bathrooms and empty the trash in the bathrooms. Well, and then you don't, you don't specify that trash cans around need to be dumped. I mean, you have to get very specific. I was meaning, like, I, I know someone that might be interested in, like, Schechter Center, but I don't know that they have the people to do the entire thing, right. oh, but they yeah. might be able to do just the Schechter Center. Right. Could they just apply for doing the Schechter Center portion, or do they have to be able to provide everything? No, that's, that's I mean, what I was... Yeah. I, I think, think that's what you're... You the menu thing. Okay, but that's what I wanted to know. I mean, it could be a business that just comes in and says, I'm only bidding on this little individual portion. Okay. Thank you. I think we'll, yeah, and what we want to avoid is multiple contractors doing multiple cleaning. Well, yeah, and, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll go on and go on Google. So, um, so and I did. I got some ideas from there, and I looked at some other ones um, and got some ideas for this. But um, you know, go on and see if there are RFPs out there that have what you're suggesting as far as. Um, you know, menus and, and how you would let that out. I mean, if, if like Dana said, somebody bids on just the Schechter Center, they got a good price on the Schechter Center, but but Joe over here has a better price on Pelican Clubhouse. How do we how do we do that? You know, so are you going to have a, a are you going to let it to a bunch of different vendors? And and that's quite a possibility as well. So you know, and it but it is kind of a nightmare to keep track of everybody and do all that. So. Alan, were you here when they when you uh, hired Remar to do the the work, uh, the, the cleaning? And did you go after an RFP for that, or how did you do that? Remember? Um, yes. Well, let me let me backtrack on that one. I think there was yeah there was an RFP because it had to go out to RFP because it was over a certain amount of money. We had um, three or four companies bid on it, and Remar ended up being the the best fit and the the best price, the lowest price. But you know that eventually, of course, escalates, Every, everything escalates, you know, that, but I figured now we'd be a great opportunity for us to, especially like the economic climate that we're, we're dealing with, we should probably get some good prices back. And being a local contractor like, like they were was pretty handy, I think. It was, it was handy, yeah. um, but sometimes dealing with local folks I found is good and bad. You know, you have your your ups and downs with that because you're not as quick to hold their feet to the fire, I guess. I, you know, I mean, personally, I wasn't, but my old boss might have been a little bit more lenient with with folks so like that. That becomes a management issue. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, you just people have to know there's there's a, a business relationship and there's a personal relationship, and you know, you just got to deal with that. But. I, mean, I don't have any problem with dealing with anybody. This agenda item is still open for public comment. <laughs> Roger Good is satellite beach resident. I think the starting point is where the where the need is immediately, and that's the Schechter Center. Uh, perhaps just issue the RFP for that at this point and then get another RFP out there to start doing the blanket when you get a chance to do a little more research because there is a plethora of knowledge out there that needs to be taken in on some of these RFPs that come forward for blanket. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Okay, let's bring it back to the council for agenda item number 12. What, would you, uh, uh, what kind of direction do you want to give uh, Ann and Alan? I think the reason why we wanted to do an RFP for the Schechter Center is because we to, to bring up increase the what is it we want it to be better so we can rent more of the rooms to right. generate some additional revenue. So right. rather than and as Ron said, there is a definite immediate need, yeah. you know, for to alleviate some of the some of the issues that we're having with overtime and you know and having one person cleaning the building. 
But I, I don't have a problem with doing this and that, but but also doing the the menu. I know. I think that that would be good. I think we should look at all those contracting services, even cutting the the, the fields and stuff. You know, I mean, we've talked about that a couple of times. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good it's a good time. So, what does the council want to do? You want to go with the. Uh, RFP as as written with the one change, or do you want to increase it? I tend to agree. I think we should go with an RFP for just the community center, and then I would like to bring the the whole um, big RFP back to council if you've had a chance, maybe Alan, to work on or to go ahead and work on it. And I think that we should. I think we should include other services in there. And let's take a look. I mean, let's be big boys and girls about this, and let's look at the difference between contracting services out and keeping services in-house. I think we need to make some calls on that, and I think this would be a start in that direction. Okay, so do I, can I get a recommendation? Yeah, I'd recommend asking, uh, uh, recommend approving, moving forward with requests for proposals for cleaning services of, of the DRSCC with the added caveat of, of moving out and bringing back to council the the RFP for all um, city cleaning services and cutting services and anything else you can determine. With, with the one change recommended. By right. The immediate. Right. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Okay. I have a motion by Councilman Goldman, second by Vice Mayor Rhodes. Lenore? Yes. 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 Yes, the recommendation, uh, recommendation is approved uh, unanimously, and I thank everyone also again for your comments. Thank you. Your comments are outstanding. Agenda item number 13. <clears throat> I can't believe it. Uh, an RFP. Oh, no, this is, yeah. Well, it, it, it is, uh, but it's not in its final format okay. for an RFP. What do we so, want to do on this? Okay, on we're, we're discussing uh, hiring a planning and zoning consultant slash contractor. Currently, the planning and zoning staff is in need of a planning and zoning consultant or contractor, and there are several activities citywide that may benefit from a planner to assist staff and the advisory boards on issues such as rezoning, redevelopment, right-of-way vacations, nonconformities, code promulgation, and site plans. And what we have here is the start of this, and I will tell you that next week it will be ready to go, but this is essentially a compilation. What I asked John to do is put this, and he is on vacation, he will be back on the 6th. Uh, of August, and what I asked him to do is to put together, and I know he's got education and experience, which, which tends to look more like you're hiring someone as an employee, but really what we're looking at is the examples of the duties and the current, specifically the current activities on the second page that he believed that he saw were the problems in planning and zoning that uh, one could help with on that. And the recommendation is also to do an RFP, RFQ for a planning consultant to be provided to the Florida Planning and Zoning Association, who knew there was a Brevard chapter for that, and to be posted on the job opportunity page. Doesn't mean we can, can't go out, but again, maybe there are some people who do know Brevard County, who do know some of the issues that um, you know, that some of the municipalities uh, are having and so on. In fact, because I do know of one individual who's already retired from Brevard County. That's just one. Additionally, the RFP can be provided, can be provided to other trade sources. And we're looking at about 25 k That doesn't mean we have to spend that much. We would be doing this mainly as needed. And um, what, what I plan to do is next week actually get the RFP in the proper format so that it can go out. When, when uh, right. so are you saying that uh, it's going to come back to us in proper well, format or do you yes. want approval? To, well, uh, I guess I'm asking for approval to, to go ahead and just get it done following the, you know, some of the, because uh, obviously there is a desire and a need to get this moving. I do have some questions, and they could be uh, questions for Jim. Do we not have to, I think it's Florida Statute 187, CCNA, when it comes to planning services? 
yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it really needs to be a, a RFQ and, the, and it will be a contract for continuing services. So I do okay. think it needs to come back. For continuing services? With uh, Jim looking at it because Okay. With the statute involved, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, the statute is, okay. it comes into play when it comes into Sounds play. good. So would that be to use this person, like, like example, like we use our city attorney, on an as-needed basis? Yes. I like that. But I think by under the statute, you have you have to do it that way. So I think it, when it comes to the, um, and I don't know, I, I read in our code that the threshold for competitive bidding was eight eight thousand five hundred, but we've talked about it being twenty two five. So I don't think if we've ever we've ever codified twenty two five if it's four fifths of council voting to. I didn't see that in the code. No, um, and I think and I, I might okay. actually have it here. Strange. Okay, that's enough. fine. <laughs> So I think it just needs to be uh, brought back and reworked based on okay. based upon. Uh, and and, talk and for, the, for the public, I understand agenda item number 13, uh, as presented, uh, is, is going back uh, to the city attorney and to the uh, city manager for uh, an update and review. And we'll see it uh, maybe on the 8th, but definitely on the 15th. Yes. On the 15th. Yes. We'll, we'll, 15th. we'll, shoot, we'll shoot for the 8th, but again, that's budget and everything else. We don't yeah. want to load that up, I don't think, too much. We don't so want if we to can get it right by the 15th, hopefully that will be good. We'll do it on the 15th. Just one more quick question. The, the funding for the, the 25K, potentially, um, um, certainly some of this in the CRA district. Well, um, can we split some of the costs for that since there's a lot of uh, funds in, in there at this time in the CRA? That, that might be another issue because then, then you know, speaking at the, so to speak, CRA board meeting, do we want to be discussing what we do want in the future? Do you want a new CRA director? Do you, and again, remember, they were very specific. Uh, our staff, CGA, was very specific about what we can and cannot do. You either do a memorandum with billable hours or you're going to set aside a real clear division, 50-50 or something of that nature, but really have to be exceedingly careful on how that's done. And that's the caveat there. So this was just specifically, and it already is in the for the fiscal year 12-13 budget for the 25K for this, we're, we're thinking ahead here. So, um, you know, we have to be real careful in separation of tasks. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, let's press on to agenda item, since, that, since we're going to table that, uh, or we're going to just move it, we're not going to table it because we haven't really discussed it. Agenda item number 14 is discuss take action on a permanent city manager's search. Ian? Right. And what I did here, and this was just, a, actually what I did is I looked at a number of headhunters and how they wrote up their city, pers uh, city prospectus as well as a profile of the position and job description of uh, city manager. So I actually compiled probably several uh, pieces to get for qualifications, what's out there now, and this type of thing. Um, so this is actually a, a description uh, of the city of Satellite Beach, the scenic beauty and amenities, uh, local government, uh, challenges and opportunities. I also include city council's goals there, which I thought was appropriate. Uh, city manager qualifications, compensation, application and hiring schedule, and so on. So it's four pages. Some of the applications I looked, or some of the prospectus and, um, you know, the information they would send out to um, suggest that individuals should apply for a permanent city manager uh, position were really long. And I think that, you know, four pages is just my, you know, having done a lot of writing, I would say that four pages is sufficient to digest. Now, if you wanted to throw some some pictures in uh, of the area, <clears throat> excuse me, that might be also a possibility. But anyway, this was a compilation of things and then specifically dealing with the attributes and the amenities of Satellite Beach. So um, that's what I did here. And I also included, there were three council members who added what and I've just attached them as emails rather than putting them in because I thought that you would like to discuss certain qualifications and then add what you will. Uh, but I only have three emails from uh, council members on that. And then I've also indicated um, that, so this is kind of a draft proposal, city prospectus and profile of the position. And then suggesting you, there's a couple possibilities. You can go with the ICMA newsletter, the FCCMA. You've also seen the Florida League of Cities with 
Ken Small and his CMs that gets out uh, to a lot of locations. Um, those would be minimal cost, and then of course looking at a headhunter, you're looking at probably $20,000. Uh, frankly, what I wrote here is a really good start and very, um, uh, very similar to the kinds of things that they do. Then I put in a timeline here too. For example, ad placement August 15th or September 1st, review applications September 15th. I, I don't know, if, is that, that enough time, two weeks? Um, there seem to be a lot of applications that are coming in. Maybe you'd rather have a month. Um, and so I just set up a, a a timeline that you can discuss. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you, and thank you for this work. Let's bring it back to the council. A couple of things we want to decide is how do we want to start the process, or how do we want to get the process going? Uh, and uh, uh, Anne's uh, uh, position description. Let's discuss that. First, let's see how do we want to get the word out. I know that there's some uh, different discussions. Uh, headhunter, emails, things like that. What, what, what do you like to do? I thought at the last meeting, staff was supposed to come back with quotes for a headhunter. I think they did. They got uh, 20000 Yeah, plus. it's, it's $20,000, So do we want to... Uh, did you... Who were the firms or... Yeah. That was, well, Colin Basinger, but, but we, there was no... I did not see a request to come back with I thought that's uh, um, amounts of, uh, to get uh, a you know, quotations from the, that. I, I did not see that. I, I usually take pretty good notes, but I did not I have that written down. So if that was the case, then. Well, uh, but ICMA and FCCMA are not free, though, are they? No, they are not. But I think that the the, some, the ANS run in the realm, I'm going to say up to about $1,000 if you're oh. going to do five to, depending on what you would have in there. And they have their newsletters that go out as well. And so that's up to you. Rough Riders? There was another group called the Rough Riders, and I think those are they retired uh, yes. uh, city managers. city managers. Ra is it Range, Range, Range Riders? Sorry. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. I think Range, Range Riders typically act as interims. They'll get yeah. Well, <clears throat> let me see here. I was seeing if there was something in this uh, information. Okay, well, uh, let's let's see what the council wants to do on this, on how we want to get the word out. <clears throat> well, I'm. I think I said this before. I'm leaning towards a headhunter, um, although we don't have exact costs. But um, I, I think Scott last meeting brought in Cocoa Beach is in the process of hiring a. The city manager, um, Fort Pierce, a bunch of communities, and and they're using headhunters to bring in the applications and, and narrow them down for for the communities. So, I'd kind of like to do it in house. I, I'm not really sure I want to be spending that kind of money and reading that 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 uh, thing from uh, that comes that we get online every day, whatever that is. Ken Small Steel. Ken Small Steel. Um, there have been some pretty big ticket headhunting going on out there. And I'm not sure that uh, that they get their money's worth out of that. Um, well, I, I I would kind of like to try to handle this in house. I think the last time we hired, well, that was 20 something years ago. I think Mayor Schechter was part of that group. Um, I think we can find a group of folks to to interested folks with skin in the game who would be willing to to, to make that effort happen. Well, I one know, of uh, uh, go ahead, Scott. I, I know twenty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, but and I and I do see all the the listings and the postings are neighboring cities in the county and the, the whole state. Majority of them, if not all of them, go out to headhunting firms. I know it's a lot of money. It's a, that's a big decision. It's a, it's a I know, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to be shortchanged on, on the search. It's going to take a lot of effort by volunteers and people to to look through things. So. Yeah, here's, here's my point, though. If we go with the headhunting route, we're going to get what everybody else gets. And that, and I'm not sure that that's what we want. I think, personally, I want to see a new way of running a, a, a city. I want to see business professionals involved. Um, I want to see people who have business backgrounds um, who come in here with the uh, efficiency thought process in mind. Um, that can make things happen. They've run businesses, 
um, they, can, they, they can run a city. Um, yeah, we do need some specialized inputs with regard to city statutes and, and county and state and all those sorts of reporting requirements, but that's why we have a staff. That's why we have staff that have those sorts of, of uh, that sort of knowledge. So I, I just want to caution that if we go out to a city manager headhunting organization, we're going to get a run-of-the-mill city manager, and that's not what I want. I want a different sort of a manager. Well, certainly you can hire a headhunting firm that will go out and not limit it to former city managers or, or that type of thing. You could have so what I'm saying, I agree, but what I'm saying is, generally speaking, the companies that do the, the headhunting for city managers, you know, specialize in, specialize in city manager headhunting. I'm not sure we want a specialization in city manager headhunting. Well, I think that we are looking for a city manager, and uh, I don't know how many, I, I looked it up a while back on the League of Cities, um, an extraordinary amount of resumes are coming in. Mm -hmm. They're not just your average, ordinary folks out there. There's some talented people out there that are looking for positions. Yeah. So um, I think we have a, a stringent timeline um, to hire a new city manager. Um, I know it's, you know, twenty thousand um, dollars, but it's a it's a it's a it's the primary position in the city. This is a manager strong city and I think I think attention needs to be given to it and, and uh, I don't I don't know what else to say. I have my list of information in here. We're looking for somebody who's pretty diverse. Um, you know we we are we are a coastal community so we need somebody with a Hurricane mind. preparedness, you know, we're in the middle of the collecting, collective bargaining. Uh, we have the CRA issue, so you need somebody with uh, extensive background in Florida Statute 163, whichever direction we plan to go. Well, um, ICA, ICMA member, um, in any event, that's, that's uh, and we also need a capital improvement plan, so, um, which is really essential to this community, which we have never had. So. Um, they're just my thoughts, and I have my list of 14 criteria, and we'll see what the public has to say. It's hard for me to make a decision on this. I know in a couple of things that are coming up are going are gonna, to uh, make the council spend some money that we weren't counting on. Uh, and this is another 25000 so that we're not budgeted for. And then I just have to see... You know, and I'm really struggling with this, and uh, you can help me out. I know ICMA, they could help us, FCCMA uh, could help us, the range riders. Uh, I think headhunters will do all, all the work for us. Uh, the plus kind of gets me 20,000 K plus. I think, I don't, I don't know where our money is. I, I'm not sure where this money is coming from. That's my problem in, in this fiscal year. And like I said, we got another. We're going to be spending some other money on. Uh, so that's about fifty thousand. Uh, Brenda, where is this? Or or Ann? I mean, Brenda, you said where? Where is this? What are you thinking? I mean, is it better to wait to pay them till next fiscal? Well, we got to do this by December 20th. I think it was June 20th. We have six months, December 20th, and December is kind of a tough month anyway. And then who? And then I, I did have a question. Uh, when you bring these people in, who pays travel and hotels? And th is that is that a city uh, uh, commitment or or the final five? I mean. Uh, uh, the short list is that something that we pick up? I mean, do we decide that? I mean, this this is going to be expensive. On the Ken Smalls uh, thing, he did that at Boynton Beach, my former city there in South Florida, and they narrowed it down to I don't know four, five, six candidates, and then they paid the expenses to bring them back for a follow-up interview. But the initially, when they came for the interview, they were required to pay their own yeah, their own that's way. What, that's what you and, uh, the yeah. Interview, so. yeah. So so, but but you still the last uh, the short list. Is usually the city pays for the short list, so that's probably probably another five to eight. It depends. I mean, there's people. Dale was telling me you got people that went to Cocoa Beach from Michigan, right, and stuff. If you're paying, uh, if you're paying that from Michigan, it's going to cost this much: twenty thousand plus plus. Okay. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm not well, sure. I, I, no, I understand that. But this is that you know we have a 10,000 residents. We bring in what eight million, an eight million dollar a year budget, and you're really talking about a small amount of change for a, a very, very, very important position. I, I am. No, you're you're exactly right, and I'm not arguing with that, and that's why I'm torn. On the fence, yeah. I'm really torn. Uh, let's get some public comment. Michelle. Chef French, resident. Um, a couple of things here. First of all, I know the county, in their search and quest for a director for the Brevard Animal Shelter, refused to pay any amount of money to bring anybody in at any point in time. They left it. If you want the job, you will make the effort. You will come wherever you came from. People came from D.C., people came from Virginia, they came from wherever. Even when it got to a short list, they paid the money to come. Okay, one thing. Another thing, I'm not exactly sure exactly where what you're referring to when you, you talked about the, you know, I understand the 20000 here, but the other money that you've already, that the council has already agreed to pay. But my thought is if, if any of that money that, that you might have already decided that we might want to be paying for any facades or anything around here, that any grants or any, you know, loans, grants or whatever to businesses, I think that needs to be put on hold. If that money can be redirected to this outlet, if you need to do that, that is a far better expense of money at this point in time because right now as a city, um, although I know that we want to be business friendly and I, I got it, that's great, however, we do not even have the issue with non-conforming lots for businesses to bring businesses in. So. I think that's putting the cart before the horse, and if that money would, could be freed up, if we've already agreed, I'm not even sure where we stand on that, but if we've already agreed to do that, I think that money would be very well spent to be redirected this direction if you possibly need it to do whatever you need to do to find a, a city manager. Okay. Thank you. Just, just real quick on that, um, on that point, and I think Skip brought it up earlier. Didn't we decide on the grant program that um, we were not going to extend the grant program any longer and that it would we would let it play out to the end of the year? Isn't that October, what you decided? Uh, yeah, that's I'm sorry, it, what did I say? Well, you said grant. Well, okay, I think facade. Said, yeah. That's right. CRA 30, money. That's CRA. 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 And September 30th. Yes, Jason Hoppenbrow, resident. Um, I just want to uh, say I'm kind of with you, uh, Bill, in support of uh, maybe a local committee, uh, thinking outside the box. I, I, I would think that if you go with some of these uh, city manager trade unions or whatever, you're going to get more of the same. And if we look all across the country, you know, we see a lot of cities are in trouble, maybe because they've been managed the same way. I think maybe it's time to start thinking about the business. Of, of, of running our city and try to see if we can get the best people, maybe with a public administration background or business background, so that, you know, maybe we'll be able to think a little bit differently on how we're running, uh, you know, handling our affairs. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Roger Goodis, resident. Um, <clears throat> just want to call to your attention, I know headhunters are expensive, but do not kid yourself, you as council will have to do also some work with that. It does take the burden away from a citizen's group. That's understood, but you all have to weigh that consequence. But I will tell you this much, if you haven't looked at the City of Cocoa Beach's website, with all the applicants that the headhunter, brought, headhunter did bring in, there were 125 initial applicants. And something that was interesting, there were diverse backgrounds. Um, even I was surprised about that. There were engineers, there were people in the private industry and so forth. It was really interesting to see that. And the caliber of the people that were brought in, amazing. Amazing, and I also did look at the the International Managers Association, and they have listings there. And there's there's quite a bit out there too. That could be a venue to take too. But the qualifications that came through to to uh, Cocoa Beach was 
You need to look at it. Thank you. Steve. Years ago in another life, I hired people for a living, literally hired thousands of people, including vice presidents for a company that did over half a billion dollars a year in business. Trust me, $20,000 is a big chunk of change in any business. And to degrade it to saying it's not much, cheapen something. In my experience, headhunters will give you what you tell them, and if you're telling them, you already know. You already know the person that you want to hire. And the more qualifications that you lay out for the headhunter, the more they are just checking off what you want done. It's a lot easier to get the person, in my experience, to get the person you want without going through a headhunter because the headhunter brings in only the person that you've already said you want. Once you know, why are you paying somebody else to do your own work for you? Diane Douglas, resident, um, why don't you try hiring it yourself and then if that doesn't work you can always use headhunters as a plan B because they're always there. Thank you. Okay, I see no other hands. Let's bring it back to council. Well, I think another something else this council needs to think about is, is do we want a full-time city manager before the election or after the election? The, you know, there's three seats up in the fall, and do we want to hire someone before or after? I mean, it, it, that's the reality. It's a very good point. You know, and I don't know if this is legal or not, but somebody brought up the point about Cocoa Beach just having done a city manager search. Who was that? Ron. Ron. Having just done a city manager search and the fact that they've got a hundred and something and they were very highly qualified from diverse backgrounds. Is it? Is it, is it, is it legal? Is it legal to use that work? No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, really. Let's face it. I mean, yeah. they've done they've done the homework. They've done the homework. Why don't Why don't we Why don't we do a, a an ad um, <laughs> that we send out through the ICMA or whatever through trade journals, you know, and, and we send an ad saying um, these are the these are these are the calls that we're looking for, and use the same calls that they did that we can add to that list, and then call that herd. You know, in other words, you know, we can we can freshen the list with our own uh, ad, and then we can use that list to call that herd and, and bring in us. Uh, I think if we don't use their effort and their money, I think it's better. Yeah. Okay. But you do have a problem there. You, you have to list the qualifications. You remember, Cocoa Beach has got a water company, electric company, wastewater mm -hmm. company. Okay. A lot of we, variables there. Mm -hmm. so, but, but you've got to stylize it yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, is there a way we can work with the time frame, like Ms. Douglas said, to to maybe do both? And just like what you're saying too, I agree with you that uh, I, you know, based on what I said last time, if I pick a new city manager, I will not be working with a new city manager, and maybe that's not the, you know, not one of the better things to do because other people would would be involved in that. However, that is a slippery slope because. The, a new council will not take over until probably December 1st. Right. And we have to have something by December 20th. Yeah. A lot of work would have to be so, done. So, so, I mean, it's, it's really very, very tight on... on. Yeah. Now, is this, the six months is in our, it's in our charter, so right. we cannot do anything with that. So, so we we'll probably have to do something. Could we go ahead and, and send out an ad um, in, you know, we'll determine where the, or, you know, Ann can bring to us where the, or we'll take inputs from people who know, um, and send out the ad with our requirements for a date certain in, you know, pick a date, sometime in September for, uh, for initial inputs, and then we'll hold it, and we can have a, a special meeting, and we can, uh, in, in the interim, we can go through 
what Cocoa Beach has already done, take those additional ones that we get from our ad, and then we all bring in our, at a special meeting, we all bring in our top ten. Well, I have to go, I have to be honest. I, I just thought it was really unfair to the, the way the process happened for the interim. There really wasn't enough time to look at all those app applicants. I mean, it, I, I didn't even, I mean, I, I breathed through them, but I didn't have enough time to, and, and then to have these applicants come in for 10 minutes with, with a couple questions just really doesn't allow you the time to get to know them. Or, and I'm just being honest, I'm, I mean, it, I, I thought it was a little unfair to some of those applicants that came a long way with that they, had, you know, had five minutes can, and can you, questions. Can you say this is, this is a big issue. Uh, David, and, and you told us once before, uh, how did you narrow it down to the top five? Sorry, David, I just, but, but we need, to, you need to refresh my, the, the process, uh, David Sector is, um, we did 25 first and cut down to the top 25 in the, in the committee itself. We didn't go out and interview You had them. a committee that yes. took all the applicants. And we read all of them. And you we, went we, down. We, we had less than 100, I think, but it was still not. Nobody 100. on the council. Nobody on the council. The committee, the committee looked through all those and called it down to 25, and then we called it down to 10, I think, then down to 5. And 5 is what we presented to the council. How did you uh, call it down? Did, just by discussion? Yes. No interviews? Well, no, no interviews. But the we, last five, right? The last five was, was the council made the decision. They, they actually only brought one guy in. I, they talked to the first five by telephone. But we're talking about the dark ages now, remember? Yeah. We didn't have Skype and all this neat stuff that we have opportunity to use now. We, 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 we did use the telephone. We didn't have that. Bella got us that, that, yeah. by that point. By that's time. true. Skype is Skype we, we, did do, we did do some checking. The committee did. Bud Meyer did a lot of checking and call, call people with interviews that they put on for their, their references. So we did a lot of work ahead of time before it ever got to council. But they, they had, and it turned out they only brought one guy in an interview, and that was my, the one they hired. But they did, we, did, we did call it down a couple of different times to try to do that for you. So the council only saw Ten, when five. I, when I came, to, well, they saw the, the five, they, they could look at anything they wanted, but they, we, we gave them five as our recommendation. But, but a lot of time went into getting them down. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's a oh, tremendous yeah. amount of time, yeah. and that's what I thought. Last time, it, it just wasn't an, it wasn't enough to get to really know the folks that came that's, to the interview. That's, that's fine. Thank you. Right here. Uh, okay, let's bring it back. Could, well, if, if we, extend, if we uh, use our timeline, uh, and, and I take Councilman's input to heart, and I agree, um, if, we, if we use it, our timeline appropriately, could we do a series especially once we get the budget behind us and everything, we'll have a little bit more time open up and do a series of special meetings and we do exactly what Mayor Schechter's committee did, but we do it as a council. And we take those, we, we, we take those uh, resumes that we're going to be getting, applications and resumes, um, and we, each of us bring in, on the first meeting we bring in uh, and our top um, 10 apiece and we walk out of here with the top 25. And then we go back through them, and at the next special meeting, we bring in our top, out of that top 25, we bring in our top five, and we walk out with the top 10, and so on and so forth, until we get down to those five, and then we Skype interview the five. Yeah, and I, I, I know that's interesting, but I, I, I'm either leaning towards an appointed committee to do that, go through that process, or a headhunter to get us to that process. I, I like the appointed I, an appointed committee. I, it's just too much work for. That's fine with me. It'd be less plus, work. plus you get you get more input. It'll be less work. That's you fine. get citizen input, and then you get council. But, input. but there's one point I would like to bring up. Um, it's my understanding that you know if we do have a committee, that's all public record. It's all public information. With a headhunter, I don't believe until a certain point it is open to public record. And a lot of uh, applicants that will not apply because. They have jobs and they don't want their employer to know that they're looking for another job. And so you, you might be weeding out a few because that's public record and uh, if we go through a committee. Well, but, uh, yeah. Is that true, Jim? I don't know, I was just thinking about that. If you've hired somebody to, to do an activity that you have the obligation to perform, so normally you can't hire somebody and then have that somebody not have to comply with the same rules, the same rules that the council would otherwise have to comply with. 
I mean, obviously, if they're individual, they don't have to be public meeting stuff, but the public records, I think, would probably apply to them. Yeah, I, I actually talked with the uh, school board member who told me that. That, it, that, that yeah. was true. Yeah. Okay. And so it, it, you know, it affects some of the applicants that we might get. So, right. I mean, if you want to uh, look yeah, at it, that's fine. Yeah. You know, well, if, if it's a, if, you know, if it is a public record issue, then that uh, will impact, that it potentially can affect who your applicants will right. be. Uh, all right, let's make a decision. I, I, I okay, favor. You know, I have to tell you, too. <laughs> let's get back to Google. I mean, it's unfair that it, if it is public record, then people are Googling. I mean, you can Google me now. Before, like I said, before I ran for election, I was known for the girl called the biggest Marlin in Cabo San Lucas. Now I got all kinds of smack about me <laughs> on, on there. So, it, you know, then you got everybody coming, and so-and-so did this, and so-and-so did that. I don't really want to be influenced by that kind of stuff. I just want to look at the qualifications and, and conduct a proper interview. Well, um, even if a headhunter gives you a name, yeah, you, no, you I, I, I have do. The opportunity to Google that person, right? right? I mean, I mean, at the end, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. the yeah. end. I, I'm really needed in the beginning of the process. <laughs> I'd like to press with the um, with the appointed uh, committee, and, and I think maybe what we, I mean, just a, a an, you know a suggestion would be. Um, Mr. Mayor, how many people did you have on that committee? Five or six. Okay, that's, that's what I thought you told us last time. Five. Five. Maybe we each come in with two? No, it's too many. One each. That's, that's just too many people. Okay, um, just one each and just do it. But I'm also concerned, too, that there's three seats up and then we're appointing people that... Yeah, but well, there's going to be no time. I mean, uh, no, I understand. So, That's why we I'm, I'm still council. leaning towards an outside entity, given the qualifications, let them pick. With. Yeah. Because you're, you're seated up. You're, yeah. you're not running. If you could delay it, I, I say, but, you know, based <laughs> I on... I don't think you can. That's why I'm saying. I, I, I don't think that's the way to go, given the situation. Votes are going to be certified until much later uh, this year, because there's so many. Sorry, I'm sorry, I can't take it. I can't take it. Well, the, the new council... The new council, uh, seated council, doesn't get sworn in or whatever until December anyway, did it? It'd probably it probably be the 1st of December. Yeah, it's it's, it's the first meeting after the votes are certified by the county, and I don't think that that's going to be. Election day is the 6th. I don't think that's going to be sometimes because there's so many things going on, maybe maybe eight days. So then it's, it's not the next meeting, but it's the meeting after that meeting. I think the city council here needs to I agree. Uh, hire yeah. the new full-time city manager. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, go ahead. Somebody make a motion. I think I know what you want to do. But I'll make a motion that uh, that we appoint a uh, uh, city manager hiring board by each bringing in one name. Is that is that right? An appointed someone appointed. I, I'm I'm still leaning towards that. I know, but but. Yeah. Okay. Each of us bring in one name uh, at the next council meeting. Sure. Which is the fifteenth of and, August. And uh, for what purpose? To uh, hire a city manager by uh, reviewing. I mean, they're going to have to. They're going to have to bring the. We're going to have to tell them the process that we want them to to, to do. And the process is going to be um, a local effort with ICMA and FCCMA, um, and as well as any other trade. Journals uh, that they ask you. Just one question: Do we have? Well, if if this goes through, do we have to? We have to create a committee, correct? For for it be an ordinance. I don't think it has to be an ordinance. No. Okay. I'm just checking. Okay. And then, uh, uh, and I don't think we want to set dates and stuff like that at this point. But I think that would be up to the up to the committee. Okay. Don't we have a meeting on the eighth? Uh, budgets, strictly budgets. Can we come up with the names by then? Oh, we, we, we could, if you want to. We can come up with one name in the next seven days. Okay, let's do it. I mean, that's, that's just the, that, that would take, that wouldn't take that long. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a motion. Uh, Lenore, did you get the motion? I'm sorry.
looking into hiring a city manager with local efforts uh, being submitted to RCMA, a, and a, excuse me, FCCMA, as well as other trade journals. That's why I'm Thank you. Uh, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Dolan, second by Vice Mayor Rhodes. Lenore? Councilman Martina? No. Councilman Rhodes? Yes. Councilman Dolan? Yes. Yes, and the motion passes three to one. Now, one thing we didn't do, we didn't look at qualifications to send out. Is it, oh, we're just going to appoint the committee, and then we'll look. Uh, do you want us to give you or, or? Well, it, anyone else who has not, I think it was um, Scott and Lloyd have not sent in any qualifications. qualifications. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you. And uh, thanks for your comments, everyone, and thanks for the great discussion, Council. Agenda item number 15, uh, RFP for professional Auditing services in. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Here it is, auditing services. And Brenda is going to present that. Hi, Brenda. Hello. Good evening. Based upon Florida statutes 218.391 and the recommendations as published by the Auditor General. These same rules were also followed when we signed our last uh, auditor contract. Both the documents that you have contain blanks uh, to be completed when the council is ready to go forward with this item. And if you have any questions on any of them, I'm available. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, let me bring it back to the council. Is this for, well, I, I guess I'll ask the question, what year? I noticed you have 2014 on here. Is that because we have a appointment option? I know it's not the right, until 2013? Car rigs and Ingram. Is yes, but, it, but I mean, what, is this RFP for this year or next year? For the following fiscal year. Chris, they're going to be doing this fiscal year end, 9-30-12. Okay, they're doing 9-30-12, and then they're doing, uh, they're going to look at 2011-12 and 2013-14. I mean, this says uh, 2014 that this becomes effective. Ending, fiscal year ending 9-30-13. Yes, we're looking at fiscal year... 1213 with this and remember then the auditor would be if you're looking on page five am i correct brenda with the january there that's when you would have selected that individual yes but it would be for fiscal year 1213 12 13 ending 1213 so it'd be 13 14. oh oh it'd, it'd be it'd be not for current right it's not the current fiscal year ending 9 30 12. so so we'll have one more audit with the yes. current auditors, is what you're saying? Correct. Correct. Because it's too late now in the game. Why, right. why, why is it too late? Well, we've already incurred uh, some billing issues because I've contacted them during the year right now, um, since last audit, because um, I contact them during the year for certain things. Um, and now they're going to be going through by the beginning of October, they've already, will be doing walkthroughs, um, we'll be starting with our um, preliminary audit work. Um, it's, it's just, by the time you get, get your committee going, you go out for RFPs, I mean, it, it's, it takes at least a good six months, according to, you know, the rules of the Auditor General, it's, it's going to, it's a long progress process, excuse me. I mean, it's not, you can't just... I thought, and I don't have the contract in front of me, but I thought it was a lump sum contract. Excuse me? 29... Yeah, right at $30,000. Uh, yeah. I think it was. I believe yes. Yeah. Yeah. But my question is this. On page 5, you have indicated August slash September 2013. You know, who set up those? Do you have that in front of you or not? I don't want to... Uh, on page five. Of which one? On the uh, RFP? Let me look here and make sure. Yeah, I'm, yes. 
Thank you, Lenore. In the, uh, on page five at the top, you have a schedule. Who sets that schedule? Is that set by law or is oh, it? Oh, no, no. These can be adjusted. Okay. Um, yes, these can be adjusted. Okay. Yes, this is this is just um, like when the auditors come in when um, we're ready on certain items um, when they're uh, the they do their field work or when um, the head of the agency comes in and meets with us and, and when I'm ready for them to come in and do their field work and that type of thing. These dates can, can be changed, um, but when we go out for uh, to initiate the bid, you still have to have the, the committee that sets up to review these bids, and that's what's going to take so, so long. You still have to initiate this committee. Well, you, you, typically you have a committee that reviews bid packages anyway. I, there's a, every time a bid comes in, you have a, some kind of a committee. I mean, what are five members? I mean, right? you have a selection process and a ranking process. I don't think it's abnormal to have a, a committee to... I'm not arguing, but okay. I know this has been on our radar where we, we've all talked about the, the transfer of the funds and the fact that for how many years that did not show up in, in the audit. Right. But I don't see why a selection committee is so difficult. The RFP goes out, the bids come back, you set up a committee, you set up criteria, you rank them. It's just like any other RFP. Unless there's, Jim, is there some kind of statutory, special statutory requirement or some kind of? I don't remember it off the top of my head. I know there's a specific statute that talks about an auditing committee that's set up to specifically deal with hiring an auditing firm. Off the top of my head, I don't remember what's in there, but there is a specific but, statute. You know, even for the snow cone vendor, we had a committee that yeah. ranked the, the package when it came in. That's I'm our, serious. Well, see how well that works. Well, <laughs> that's in our city charter, or is that state, state statute? State statute. State statute, yes. Okay. And this is, this is right from the Auditor General. This is, this is their, their actual guidelines. 20, 26 pages. 29 pages. I think the councilwoman's question is getting at, is this the shortest amount of time we can do this in? Is that what you're getting at? Well, Because it, it seems like it's a long time. Yes, it, it took us uh, less than six months last time that we signed our contract. From going out to get the committee started, having the committee sit down and, and understand the rules by the Auditor General, and then know what their criteria is. That's why I, the Auditor Selection Committee that's why they have their own rules and guidelines to go by, based upon the Auditor General's rules. Okay. They have their own selection committee. And what year was that? What, when did we do that? When this has been updated now. No, no, no. When was the last time we had a committee, Satellite Beach? Um, that was like... Oh, no. Over, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Quite a while ago. Um, here's, here's the way I remember it. Um, they came in, uh, the auditing committee, Hoyam and Dobson at the time, came in to review and uh, discuss um, them being taken over by a larger firm, changing their name, and us re-signing a contract with them. Yes, sir. At that time, I remember several of us here, several peop people uh, in, in the audience, Ask them questions specifically about the transfer of, of uh, money uh, from the general fund, the CRA fund, and, and commingling that type of thing, which they uh, replied to my memory that uh, they had no idea. They still, at this point, never thought there was any problem with it. And that was unacceptable to me, personally. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that at all. I believe their contract reads that we can cancel their contract within 30 days. One of us, possibly me, asked, can we cancel their contract? And I believe you or, or the city manager said, well, we can't cancel them right now because we're in the middle of paperwork. We're in the middle of doing our thing, so we can't do that. But after they finish in a couple months, maybe we can do it. And now I hear that, oh, they're in the middle of something else. They started something last week, so we got to ride that train again. So why do we have a 30-day cancellation clause when that would, that's never even in the realm of possibility? I'd like to review and, and look at somebody else. I think they got us in a big boatload of trouble with the CRA funds issue, and they never fessed up to it. And I don't think that's 
appropriate. Now, to be honest, I don't, again, I don't have the contract, but I don't even think it's a 30-day notice. It's just written notice. Mm -hmm. oh, the memory's coming back. Yeah, I don't, I, I looked at it. I yes, it, it's, I it's, it's a date time. Well, the issue, the issue is, is the city's liable for whatever billings have accrued through the date of the cancellation. But I also talked to Ann about it a little bit, and I guess the issue at this point, and I understand the concerns by council, but I guess from a practical stand, not the legal standpoint, but the practical standpoint is, is that about the time that the city would be hiring a new auditor is about the time when the deliverable would be done. And that's what the issue, to me, that's what I see the issue to be now. And, I'm, and I understand fully what your statement was earlier, but that's where, that's what they're looking at now. It's more of a practical issue than a legal issue. If I had because known... the city will incur auditing fees, and you don't want to be incurring auditing fees, and then basically have to pay the new auditor the same fees too. And the fact that the deliverable would normally be delivered about the time you'd be hiring but the new auditor. The, when does the auditing process start? Well, if I had known that you'd want to change auditors um, right away, I mean, a long time ago, we could have started this right after the audit was finished last year. I thought that's what was going to happen. I did, too. In fact, I, I think you too. made a motion to do it. Yeah. Anyway, it, it never happened. Um, because the committee, we would have to go out to, to enact a committee or, or start the committee, and then they would enact, I guess, advertised for RFPs and then go through their selection of the RFPs and then also have, you know, oral presentations and then of the ap applicants or whoever comes in with their bids. It's not just, you know, you open the bid and then rank them and then they go. I mean, it's a very long, drawn-out process. It's not just open the bid and, and the lowest bidder wins because it's not even based on dollar value it seems no, to I mean, me that we're, 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 we're between a rock and hard place here mm -hmm. i mean I, I don't i think what happened is is it didn't happen what we thought was going to happen what we asked to happen but we are where we are and now we have to to right. roll with it to roll with it okay. and we have to roll with it in the most expeditious manner and so i guess the most expeditious manner is Just what is putting together a uh, a uh, committee right mm -hmm. That, that's the first step is to put together that audit committee and get it moving. And how does that typically happen? Appointed or? No. They, yeah, it, it is a, a committee that you would create um, and then, of course, these blanks would have to be filled in by but whatever. Can, but how do we do that? Desires. How do we create this committee? Is it like we're going to create the city manager search committee? Do we each bring in a name? I mean, how, how was it done in 2009? Um, well, last time, uh, the council had appointed three citizens, and at that time, it was allowed to have staff, two staff members, it was myself and the assistant finance director. Now, under the new rules, we cannot have any staff members present. Okay. Is there a minimum in the new rules for number of citizens? Um, no. Five members. Five members. But this, Five. Okay. But but you can have either council or you could have, um, there's a minimum of three, but you can have five members or more, but you can have citizens or you can okay. have council members. Why don't we each bring in a name on the eighth for There you go. Running out of friends. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if we have to bring this in on the eighth. This is. I mean, we can let this RFP, but it's actually 18 months away. Or well, I, I thought we had to have a committee before we let the RFP. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. Did. So but that's why okay. time is of the essence. That's true. Okay. Well, it's not as, well, as, it's, it's not as, as, but I say let's just get it going. Okay. I'd like to do it. All right, let me open this up. Uh, what the council is, is on this RFP, it is not for the auditor for this fiscal year, the, this, the end of this fiscal year, but it is for the next, uh, the one starting October 1st, and uh, we have an RFP. So uh, do I have any public comment? Okay, I have Michelle, Ron, Skip. 
Michelle Branch resident. Scott, your memory is good because my memory was about the same and I know I am almost 100% certain I will go back and listen to some of the, the audio, but I'm fairly certain, Brenda, that you had a pretty good idea that this was an issue with the council about that auditing committee after the whole debacle about the CRA. And the fact that we are once again between a rock and a hard place because the can has been kicked down the road until it went down too far and now it can't be recovered and we have to go with an auditing committee or an auditing contract that the council was not happy with eight months ago is beyond belief to me that, that we're having to do it. However, um, this is one of those incidents that I think everybody needs to remember where the ball fell and who dropped the ball. And keep it in mind that when something is said, there is a recording of it, there is documentation, and follow through and look it up and find out where the ball got dropped so that people can be held accountable. Ron? Ron Jagutis, President Satellite Beach. Uh, this is a start of an RFP by no means. I don't, based on my professional experience, it's not totally complete yet, but since we have time, I'm going to defer any comment and go ahead and send a marked up copy and we'll go from there. Thank you, sir. Good. Unless you guys are going to push the envelope of getting a new auditor, um, but you may have issues with deadlines. Yeah. Skip, did you want to say something? Uh, yes, yeah, Skip Bollinger, uh, resident. Uh, my memory is the same as Michelle and and several others that that these previous auditors were gone and that they would be replaced. And, and I thought that was a work in progress. Uh, question. Uh, what were these auditors, and it, isn't it a matter of uh, common business practice that, that someone like an auditor that we hire for professional <laughs> services would be bonded or have the equivalent to a malpractice insurance or something like that, so that if they take a look at our books and they say, we're golden, we're good to go for 10 years, and then hypothetically, it turns out that uh, it looks like a possibility that we may owe Brevard County $1.68 million in, uh, again, hypothetically, funds that may have been purloined. Uh, isn't, isn't this actionable either for the auditors that said we were golden uh, and or the CRA director who was supposed to know how Florida Statute 163 works. I mean, this, these were highly paid professionals that, uh, I mean, understanding that the council itself is, is a citizen body of, of serving the people, but we have highly paid professionals that are supposed to advise the council when we're going astray uh, from from what the statutes allow for or provide. And it would seem to me that in this hypothetical situation, uh, someone in Brevard County withstanding either a county, the county commission or maybe even just a Brevard County taxpayer would have standing to demand their $1.68 million back. That, uh, and, and that might possibly, hypothetically, be actionable. And, and I'm just wondering if these, if these people have malpractice insurance, ain't that what it's for? Just food for thought. Thank you. Thank you. Other, other public comment? Sure. You've been wanting to speak for a little while. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Just, just a couple of questions. Nothing. Your name uh, and uh, uh, Mike Batarak, uh, Satellite Beach resident. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the only question I had had a couple that were um, the requirements for the people you pick on either one of the committees. Mm -hmm. Is there any? 
is there any stipulation or is it just can I mean how do those get you know chosen so I'm a, I'm a little you know I'm not sure I'm new to it so I'm just under you know trying to understand okay. it mm -hmm. um, and then if, if there is a stipulation what what is it that that you guys have is there something that okay okay that's my answer. Uh, question sir thank, thank you, you. Uh, any other public comment on uh, the RFP for professional auditing services? All right, let me, I'll bring it back to the council. Okay. Uh, well, to answer the gentleman's question from my own personal input, uh, I'm going to go look for folks who I know who have that sort of experience and who have made decisions like that in the past. That's, that's, my, that's my input. Yeah. And I would think everybody, but I'm not going to speak for you. And this should be really fun, this one. Okay, do we, uh, Brenda, do you need uh, any direction? And I'm sorry, I'll ask you, what do you need from us? <clears throat> well, uh, I would think that you can go ahead uh, and vote to see if you want to go ahead with moving into the selecting a new auditor. And the only thing is, again, there there are some time constraints, unfortunately, with that. So I, I would suggest that you're looking at uh, twelve thirteen for the the next. But you might as well start now. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, because if we're going to if you're going to get it done, it, I it think that train has left the station. Well, it did. Yeah. I'm uh, not happy with it, but I think it did. And, and I would just like to say, I. I Oh. Okay. Good. Uh, and then closing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for attending. No, that's all hiding in the desk. <laughs> but I, I was going to say I do agree with with the council on 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 this. I know that we were not happy with the audit agency just on a couple of things. For that, one one, I, I don't need to I'm interrupt, sorry, but I wish you had directed the the city ma prior city I, manager and told him to get going on this. I did. I, I, sure. I made a motion, I believe. I could not I, override him. Brenda, I'm, There's I'm no sorry, way yeah. I could. I know. So, you know, Mrs. French, I'm sorry. I cannot override my prior boss. Brenda, I'm sorry. Brenda, it's not it's not your yeah. so sorry, I, Brenda. Please. Brenda, yeah, yeah, no. I just want it's not you. It's just that we do we, we, I feel you did have some really are you, are you ready for this one? May 16th. I made a motion, right? And who seconded it? <laughs> can you it? believe I can remember and who that? who seconded it? That I don't remember. Okay. okay. It's not you. It's impressive. Remember. Brenda, Brenda, it is, it is, it is not. Don't. It's, hey, we're catching up. Okay. What do we want to do? Uh, so uh, we are question. ready to proceed with this. Do you want to have a motion to proceed with this? Who is that? <laughs> In closing, Michelle. <laughs> Who's that guy? That, that's not he. He probably <laughs> He doesn't have a shirt on. <laughs> that's a little concerning, actually. I'm, I'm getting frightened, actually. <laughs> oh, oh there much he is. better. We were looking at your Skype picture. It's Ky Michelle is here. She's blushing. <laughs> but, he, but you need to change that Skype picture. Dude, that one doesn't work. I will not accept the call. <laughs> Hello, do you hear us? Hey, Lloyd, uh, good to see you. Does anybody have anything else? <laughs> We're about ready to adjourn. Okay, wait a minute, we'll get back with you. Okay, so on this one, we are going to come in with the name of an audit committee, and Ann, we want to get started on this. Yeah. Sounds good. I don't good. know if you need a... On, on the 8th? On the 8th. Yeah, okay. So in the All right, uh, Lloyd, uh, welcome. We're up to uh, the last agenda item, which we're going to talk about on the 15th of August council meeting. And thanks for Skyping in. I hope your meeting went well. <laughs> Okay, then we'll be done. Yeah. Then we'll turn off the lights. But no. What? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I understand. Okay, uh, anything for the 15th of August meeting that's not on here? 
Well, I think I think some of it's going to depend upon what happens. Well, no, because all we're going to do is bring names in on the 8th. So Correct. That shouldn't generate any more work on the 15th. Yeah. That, in fact, that stuff should be well on its way by the 15th. Mm -hmm. Great. I think it looks good. It would be, you know, uh, so the public knows on the 8th we're going to have a budget meeting, a special meeting on the budget. Uh, we're going to discuss, uh, are we going to do line by line hmm. on the 8th? Yeah. Depends on what you want to do. We're going to look at okay, you know, you're going to have, have, gonna have, gonna have, have any budget, questions. Right? You, absolutely. Okay, and and you're on, going to get them tonight, so don't leave without them. I okay. have them for you. And then on the 9th, uh, we have a CRA meeting starting at 6 o'clock. And then on the 15th, we'll have a regular meeting. The 16th is a planning and zoning workshop mm -hmm. and a town hall meeting. The 20th is a planning and zoning meeting. And then we don't have anything scheduled yet. Uh, Mr. Mayor, would it be appropriate, if we're going to bring names in on the 8th uh, for both of these committees, w would it be appropriate to get started to uh, ask the committees to brief us on the 15th on their initial plan? That's a week. Is that too short a time period? That's pretty short. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, then maybe, what, what's the next one? Well, we don't have anything until the 5th. September, September. September 5th. We need to we need to definitely get the the review committee for the city manager. Okay. Should uh, we ask them maybe for an initial yeah. input on the fifteenth? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay, and then we can ask the other committee for initial input sometime in September. We'll, we'll have we we want uh, the committee that's going to be put together for the city manager to, to come back and just uh, discuss with us a uh, timeline or something on the fifteenth. Yes. Because uh, right now we're not scheduled to meet till the fifth. After okay. that, that's right. Okay. I think that's a budget meeting as well. Oh yes. The fifth. Yeah. The yes. fifth. Well, those are both. That's uh, right. Public. Back, back uh, to back. Yes. Yes. Fifth and nineteenth. Okay. Uh, uh, one other thing, I think uh, Beachcaster uh, Dana made a outstanding presentation. She's looking for sixteen hundred, twenty-two hundred. Uh, dollars for eight pages and looking to publish on the 15th of September. So that's this year's money. We have 28 and change, I think, left over from that efficiency study that we were going to do that we did with in-house people. I'd have to check with Brenda, but I'm almost positive we have the money. And the other thing I wanted to say is that I actually have looked at the, you know, we were we were going to be budgeting only eight thousand for the beachcaster. Instead, we we put seventeen and seventeen thousand for next year, year because um, that's problematic. Now, Brenda, are we going to have any problem with twenty two hundred toward the beachcaster in this fiscal year? We still have some money left over from that efficiency study that we didn't do, right? Yes, I was going to suggest that. We could, I could transfer that over from uh, capital assets. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that we can. Let me, let me tell Lloyd. Hey, Lloyd, are you with us? <laughs> okay, we had a, a citizen comment meeting on the Beachcaster, and uh, they're looking to, to publish on the 15th of September. Uh, and are asking the council for two thousand two hundred dollars to do that for an eight-page um, publication. And that would be the maximum. So, and that's the maximum. Excuse me, Jim. I just said seventy-three, not to exceed. Oh, not to exceed twenty-two hundred dollars. So we're about to vote on that. But do you have any uh, anything you'd like to say on that? And Michelle and Dana brought it up. <laughs> What was that? that uh, <laughs> it's pretty wide. <laughs> because, because you and I have to live with them. <laughs> so, uh, 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 I think it's a great idea. Uh, it, it, the funds are there. We do think the fund. We do know that Brenda says the funds are there. And, and just to clarify, the potential is. Um, for 20 ads to be included in this, which would bring down the total cost by about 600 bucks. So that's why we're saying no more than 2,200 bucks. It could be as as le as le it could be as um, we could only have to pay 1,600 bucks for it. Okay, let's have a a motion. Uh, I have a question. If, if, if 
As counsel, we're going to submit, we're down from 500 words to 100 words now, right? 150. That's like three sentences or something? Okay. 150. Okay. <laughs> okay. What if, really fast. So, and then you're, and then you're going to put the candidates for office. What if I happen to be a council member as well as a candidate for September? Do I get two articles? Two articles. Yes. Yeah. At 150 words a piece? Yes. Oh, sure. We wanted to try to encourage, like when the, the council members were doing it, we wanted the articles to be like forward thinking, um, sort of, you know, where our city is going or what we're doing to get our city to the places that we're going. The counts, when the, the people running for offices, we want that to be where they're presenting who they are, what they stand for, whatever, to the city. So they're two totally different things. So you would be totally appropriate if you wanted to be, I mean, you would write as a council member on what the councilor you or your views and visions and where you're going, and then as a council, uh, as a candidate, you write what you bring to the city or what your platform is or whatever you want with that. But we were trying to distinguish, and we wanted the articles to be not like browbeating. We're trying to encourage, like even for our um, department heads, instead of um, articles being about you know why we are or justifying who we are, that sort of thing, we want to get away from that. We're trying to get to things that are more of what is beneficial to the citizens. Um, and we want things to be, like for the department heads, to put things in their articles that would be very pertinent for the citizens to get things they need to know immediately or be very beneficial or special programs. Not not standard run-of-the-mill things that they always do that everybody knows about. So that's kind of what we were encouraging with that. Okay. And Thank then the last you. thing is, then what I get with, with Mr. Beadle about how we do like a little contract with the businesses or how do you want us to go about that because they will be advertising. We were going to set some basic guidelines on these are what are advertised, you know, the, the, your advertising material, whatever you want to call it, I'll come up with the right word, but we're going to put some parameters on it. But do I need anything else to be signed with the city or they just, how does that work? Typically they, they don't, like for the for the high school, you just okay. fill out a one-page application. And okay, then that's what we'll do. We'll, get, we'll make up one of those things. Okay, and then I'll get with Lenora yeah, we'll on how we do that. that. Okay. Do need, Dana, do you need any photographs or anything for... I have flag day, you know. When we just okay, flag and, and we'll look at that. What we're going to do is once we get everything, we're giving people guidelines and we're going to send a little email to everyone and you'll have the guidelines and we'll get all the data back and then we'll out lay it out and then we'll know for certain. Oh, we are going to um, limit our ads to either businesses in the city or individuals who live in the city, but their business may be elsewhere. So if you're a dentist that lives within Satellite Beach, you couldn't advertise your services even though your dental um, business is in Melbourne. So that we give our residents, because that's what we're trying to do, is support our residents and the things that they do. Okay, thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's have a motion. Make a motion to um, uh, grant... Uh, no more than $2,200 for the purpose of publishing the 15 September Beach Caster. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Bildman, second by Vice Mayor Rhodes. Lenore? Councilman Regina? Yes. Councilman Rhodes? Yes. Vice Mayor Rhodes? Yes. Councilman Bildman? Yes. Mayor yes, and the motion passes. I have nothing else, uh, Jim. Uh, uh, the 8th, uh, I think you can take off. We're going to discuss budget, and we will see you on the 15th. Everyone else will see you on the 8th. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Be stern. See you, Lloyd. Don't let the door in. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. I agree. <laughs>